Great. I'll Should call this meeting to that. order. <clears throat> Unfortunately, tonight I have to wear the uh, Porch Terriers jersey, but a, 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 a bet is a bet. And uh, you know, congratulations to our staff, Peters, who did an outstanding job this season and came yeah. that close to uh, yeah. moving on. But nonetheless, you know, we have to congratulate our Porch Terriers also and actually moving on to win the uh, Anavik Cup. Uh, just recently, and, and then they'll go off to the RDC shortly. So we wish them all the best, and also. And, and kudos from uh, myself as well. I, uh, not that I was a Dolphin King supporter in a big way. I was just one river supporter. Let that be known publicly that I was when I was <laughs> MLA for the area. But uh, yeah, it's it's really nice to see that uh, they went as far as they did, and some close to almost beating Portage and. Could be Swan River for uh, partnerships today. Absolutely. Right. Resolved that the agenda for the May 7th regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Antoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's approved. <clears throat> Resolved that the minutes of the April 16th regular and April 18th special meetings of council be received and approved. Moved by Councillor. Uh, memorial seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. All right, so first uh, item that we have uh, receptions and the allegations. We welcome Ron Custition, AMM uh, Board of Directors for our Parkland area. So uh, welcome, Ron, to our council meeting. Good morning, uh, good evening, Council, and thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate my time allocation. It's 15 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it may be, but uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to sit and uh, talk to uh, council. To be totally honest with you, my main objective is, as an AM director, I often wonder what can I do to enhance communication with the communities that, as a director, I represent. So that is today's appearance on my part. Uh, uh, as I feel an email has been sent to you and, and left that open to you. If there was any concerns uh, council had, by all means, use my personal email that I can relate back to the AMM organization to lobby on your behalf. And so today's appearance is just to reinforce that if there are some agenda items that you feel that uh, you would like me to take forward to the AMM organization, I'd gladly do that. Traditionally, the AM would suggest uh, an email with your concern, <coughs> and then I will bring it in person at the AMM board meeting as well. So it's kind of a paper trail. But I'll gladly, if there's any items today that uh, council wishes for me to bring up at the AMM meeting, which is, uh, I think, in about a week's time back in Portage, I'll gladly do that as well. But, uh, Today I'm here uh, to answer any questions and maybe share some thoughts on certain things that have occurred with the AMM organization I think that you're all well aware of uh, and I'll get into further discussion. But I guess at this point in time, uh, uh, Worship, I'll leave it open if you want to have an open discussion right now. Sure. Okay. okay. So then I'll uh, open up for any questions for Ron or any suggestions what we can uh have for items on, on their agenda or things that we want to move forward. Councillor, I got, I got a real easy one right off the hop. Where and when is the June district meeting? It is June the 12th in Gilbert Plains. Super. Okay. Mm -hmm. Time limit, Mr. Constitution. Sometime all day. Yeah. I'm, uh, but they might more than likely in the morning sometime. No, I think there was an email sent out on it. Yeah. There was an email. Yeah. I don't have it written down, but it is uh, 9.30. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And it's at the new hall that was recently built in Jordan Plains. June 12th, Wednesday? Yeah. Yep. Week of the 55 plus games. 
Go ahead, Mr. Poole. Do you have any information on the on the insurance on the procurement of the our insurance policy to Western? Yes, and thank you for asking that, Derek. Uh, that was one of the items that I was going to bring up. Um, we had a fairly lengthy discussion at the MM Directory and I, the challenges that the insurance company that presently supports the uh, municipal governments across Manitoba, except for two. Uh, what seems to have happened in the last three years, been, there's been such a large amount of use of the insurance claims hence being recreation facilities burning, municipal shops burning. So it almost at a point where their revenue uh, was being used up 200% of the time. So it was three consecutive years. So there's a major drawdown in the bank account with the insurance company. So when it came to negotiate for this year's insurance policy, the AMM had their challenges to get companies interested in supporting the present insurance company. And as we all know, the majority of the insurance companies are shareholders that sit with investment dollars that they choose to put into whatever and, and being this insurance company. I guess the risk is that some investors are really feeling uncomfortable based on the rise in the last three years and it seems to continue to rise. Hence the insurance premium, I'm not sure Derek, what Joyce went up, but Mossy River, I think we're at about a 9% increase in premium allocations for this year. So we're hoping this will stop, uh, and which explains part of the uh, proposal as AMMs. They've set aside some money that traditionally there's a rebate that's paid back to the municipality. They're going to kind of take less rebate back to the municipal governments, which they traditionally have for a number of years, and they want to build up a reserve of dollars so in the future years that we continue to have unusual cases that you don't have a rise in the premium rates, they'll use the reserve money that's being set aside uh, as a, a shock absorber. Uh, but they also have taken money out of the the Blue Cross and Dental program that the AMM Association, so they took money out of that to build up a higher pot of money in the long run. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's very alarming based on the insurance claims that we've had in the last number of years that the uh, the balances weren't working out appropriately, so they have to do something. I think one of the things that's a little alarming, and I'm sure uh, councils had some discussion with your uh, with your firemen or fire persons, is that a fire that happened in DePaul, and where the the fire persons were possibly going to get sued uh, because they didn't do their due diligence as fire people to put out the fire. So the AMM uh, stepped in and the insurance company helped somewhat fight that scenario as well because uh, the risk will always be that you'll lose your fire department in a heck of a hurry if they're personally, as fire people, going to be sued because the due diligence wasn't done to put out the fire and the Paul was prime example. It comes as a complete shock, but is it the possible new realities of insurance and, and claims that are, we're facing? So, uh, so I, to answer your question, Derek, hopefully I did. It, is that's that's the rationale of why the insurance premiums went up, and and they apologized for the late notice because some councils already had set their budget, and then when the premium came in, it became a bit of a financial adjustment. And that was because negotiations were ongoing with the insurance and investors until the last minute of the last dollar to close off the deal on the premiums coming in. So, so where did that end up, Ron? Well, it, it turned out to, on average, the municipalities were looking at a probably eight to 10% increase in the premium of what they paid the previous year. Councillor Gray. 
Uh, again, you, you'll have to help me because I, yeah. I sometimes don't always understand things. But isn't insurance pretty simple? Isn't it a pooled set of resources and then you just pay the claims and if the claims go up, we have to pay more? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So help me, why would AMM create a reserve to buttress um, increases? Shouldn't that be the responsibility of the individual municipalities? Like, I mean, it would be nice if the town, for instance, kept a reserve and if my insurance rates went up, they would reduce them. But apparently that's not within the municipal act. So I'm just trying to figure out why we wouldn't just let municipal councils deal with that. It's just the way it is. It's, it's insurance. And, and is there something I'm missing? I suppose, um, Councillor Gray, it's kind of like a cooperative yeah. group of insurance. So in order to minimize uh, a shared, uh, I guess, negative position, they would sooner, if this was to reoccur, we don't want to see municipalities increasing their premiums uh, or being paid insurance program premium 9% every year if we run into this continuously. If we have a reserve of money set aside, we can minimize the shocks. Okay. Maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. But isn't the reserve coming out of monies that would have come back to the municipality anyway? That's part of it, yes. It would have been a rebate back to the municipalities. Well, then aren't you just using our money to give create a reserve to protect us? Wouldn't it be better just to send us back the money and we'll take care of ourselves? Maybe, I, I, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. And, and it's, it's part of it is that, they, no doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. If there's, more, if there's money from some other source, then certainly I'm in favor of it. But otherwise, it doesn't make sense. There's okay. a second. I, I have three things, Go Your ahead. Worship, if you don't mind. Um, the second is uh, the new Water Conservation District Act. I don't know, has AMM come up with a, a position on that? Um, not to my knowledge, uh, Mr. Oh, I think they should. Okay. We've known each other quite a long time, so I think you can call me David. <laughs> but it's up to you. Yeah. Um, so the, the old act in Section 25 provides that the process for determining fees will be the um, current land assessments of all the, of the municipalities. Well, it's actually more complicated because you have to divide the district you're in and 50% of that and 50% of the entire watershed district. Right. Okay, so that's the formula, but for this area, it doesn't really matter. It's about the same thing. So my question is this, that's what, and then the current government changed the legislation, section 22, which says that there can be one of two things, either the current land assessment over the entire district or a formula um, that's agreed that and, and it's implied that it would be agreed because what's happened here is that the other three municipalities who have the vast majority of directors have passed on the watershed district a formula which we haven't agreed to and the result is as far as I can tell that uh, if the minister agrees to that and we're apparently doing a letter I'm not sure I think we're supposed to do a letter that if the minister agrees to use that formula, that he's allowed three municipalities, none of whom are residents of this municipality, to set the rates for this municipality, which seems to be contrary to common sense mm -hmm. and the municipal act. And, and certainly if there's an agreed upon formula, that is if everyone agrees, then of course that's the way it should be. And that would be the best way for everybody to agree on a formula. But if they don't, there's a fallback position, which is it's by the assessments, which seems to me the logical way to do it. I know there are other municipalities and other areas that have similar problems. In fact, there are some that have much worse problems than we do because our number is actually fairly small, but it's an irritant. So could you raise that issue about seeing that the minister complies with common sense and the law? So Dave, the question I have for you. Sure. Being the, uh, the former municipalities in the conservation, and they're saying that they're making a decision. Don't you have a representative at the okay. table now? We do, but, but there's 20 members. We yeah. have two votes. Okay. 
Okay, and so the vote on our proposal was 18 to 2, 19 to 1. No, 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 on our proposal was 18 to 2. On the proposal, then we lost that. So then their proposal came forward and our citizen rep agreed with it. And so it was 19 to 1. Okay. None of the votes increasing by more than 50% the levy for this municipality came from councillors of this municipality. And I could be wrong. But my understanding of the Municipal Act is that the people who set levies for the, for the residents of this municipality have to be the seven people around this table. Now, again, I, I know I'm pretty new and don't really understand the Municipal Act that well, but that's my understanding. Have you, uh, have you considered also, besides the AMM organization, which uh, I will... Well, I'm just asking you because we have other alternative, we have other plans, I think. The I Manitoba do. Conservation District Association is kind of a a small sister to the AMM organization as well. That you may Never even heard of it. So I, I, the reason I'm asking is because, but we can raise it with that, I'm certain. Mr. Mayor, that would be, I presume, your. But anyway, that, yes, okay. I'm asking you to raise it because we're going to be writing, I think, directly to the minister and we're going to be writing to the department, okay. raising our concerns. If I and may. to the other municipalities. And if I may ask, can you CC a copy of that to the AMM organization as well? Okay. And I'll definitely, I'll, I'll spread, I'll, I'll put additional topics to that as well. Okay. For sure. there, there's two more. Sure. Um, we are, I think, sending a letter to the AMM. Um, can you raise at the next board meeting that this council, and I won't speak for other councillors, I won't speak for other councils, but this council, when we got back from the AMM, unanimously all the seven directors, or all the seven important um, councillors agreed that the behaviors at the AMM, in terms of how we had um, political parties address the AMM and the scheduling of, of people was an embarrassment. It was wrong. And um, have I misstated it? I think everybody, and, and there are people from every political strike here, but it was universal. It, look, um, whether or not you can agree with a particular political philosophy, it doesn't matter. Right. The, tr the truth is that all of the persons who come to address that association and the councillors there are entitled to be treated with courtesy and respect. And that means not calling a coffee break when one person is speaking. That means not letting people run over by 25 or 30 minutes. That means not letting people politicize a process that should have been um, very, very, very um, positive from every perspective. And, and I don't know who made those decisions. I have my suspicions. But whoever it was ought to be sanctioned. I don't know whether it was a staff member or if it was a, like a previous board member, but it was entirely wrong. And it was a conscious, deliberate decision. And, and while they may think that in the current environment that's a good plan, and it might be for the next year, although quite candidly, given that the government has frozen funding for three years and promised to freeze funding for the next three, I don't know that it's a great plan. At least they haven't cut funding. I guess that's the positive. Can I help Rhonda explain what happened? Oh, do you know what happened? I think I do, but please. So what please. happened was, okay, so what happened was they had a number of speeches by a number of, of, of uh, ministers and, and the premier, which is all good. And then they had the Verapid session. Verapid session was scheduled to last for an hour, and then the minister, the leader of the opposition and the leader of the third party were uh, scheduled to speak, then coffee break. That was the schedule. That was the agenda that had been agreed in advance. Yes. What the chair and staff decided to do was let the bear pitch just run on to the point where the coffee break was far to stop. They then called for the leader of the opposition to come and speak, called for coffee break while the ministers milled around with people, waited till people had left the room for coffee break, and then had the leader of the opposition speak and the leader of the third party speak. It was, um, and, and I will tell you, you know, I have been known to be critical of my colleagues from time to time and, and others. And, but at the same time, you know, every single councillor from the town of Swanover stayed through those speeches. And, 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 you know, many of them had things they would have talked with different ministers who were there, myself included. But that um, was not given to us because 
from our perspective, it was a matter of ordinary courtesy and common sense that you would give somebody who had given their time to the province of Manitoba as a, as a public servant and who would come to our association to speak reasonably to us about their thoughts, um, the courtesy of listening to them. And, and it was stunning, quite candidly, that other municipalities didn't. It was stunning that the executive and senior management of the AMM thought that that was an appropriate course. It is not. And, and our municipality is supposed to be doing a letter that says that. So no, they did. Um, now I forgot what the fourth one <laughs> was. Good one. Was it just bad? <laughs> well, I think that Councillor Deloria had a question. Nope. So well, well, I was just, I was just going to say the same as Dave to, to explain what actually okay. happened. So All right. there, there there was a fourth one, and, and it will come to me, but I can't. It was something the same. Okay, so I'll let Councillor Morio go while you collect your thoughts. Okay, um, Mr. Christensen, thank you for coming. Um, hopefully the AMM board uh, should be receiving or should uh, the president should have received a letter from the Provincial um, Municipal Joint Advisory Committee on Policing. On um, Policing, yes. Sir. Yeah. Um, so we understand that the uh, provincial government would be doing uh, an upcoming review of the Police Services Act and stuff like that. And in relation to the costs of contract services and with municipal direct costs and things like that are. And the committee has put forward a number of uh, seven core principles that uh, we feel should be brought forward and lobbied towards the province with that. And also rec uh, requesting that uh, AMM and the committee, um, the Provincial Municipal Joint Advisory Committee, um, be uh, formally part of that review. Okay. Um, do you have any information of that? Has that come through AMM yet? Or um, that letter would have probably be, would, have, would have came through the chairperson of uh, her worship, uh, Shelley Hart, uh, to uh, President Ralph Goring? I had no knowledge of that. Uh, that comes through. So that, that, was, that letter was sent to Shelley? No, it's from Shelley to uh, Okay. Uh, the AMM president. So that's so. If you haven't seen it, it should be coming up on your okay. agenda very shortly. Yeah. Um, so if you're not aware, I'm on. I sit on the provincial uh, municipal joint advisory committee okay. uh, for policing. So. Um, so I strongly that. encourage it that AMM lobbies the province that uh, we are fully involved into that uh, upcoming uh, police services act review. Okay. Um, especially when it comes to dealing with the, the municipal costs regarding policing yeah. um, and different uh, we submitted as you will see in the letter um, <coughs> some suggestions and some core principles as to how to divvy up the costs or come to a calculation mm -hmm. um, by thinking outside the box and things like that versus the standard you know, per capita uh, yeah. grant as a result especially as a result of amalgamation um, with the number of citizens in each um, right. community which determines if you're in or out or paying for municipal costs. May I ask the question, what, uh, what is the town of Swan River's present dollar allocation to our safety costs? 1.2 million. Yeah. Yeah. Much? 1.2 million. Thank you. The actual expenditure in the budget coming up is just over 1 million because as with every other municipality in Manitoba, it's not fully staffed. Yeah, correct. Sorry. Mm. So it's a big part of our budget, obviously. Yeah. Fourteen percent. And I guess on the policing costs, and just I guess just speaking for myself, we don't necessarily have a problem paying for policing if, if, if that's what it if if that's what needs to be done. But but the issue that I have with it is the fact that. Where not all municipalities are treated equally. If, if if you were, you know, I know, I know since amalgamation that things have changed. But if you if you're from a, a rural municipality, you know, police costs, or if you're under, yeah, whereas where the province is, the province picks up those costs. So we need to either either figure out a more equitable way where to uh, to to pay for it. You know, if 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 we need to continue paying, that's fine. But everybody else should, continue, should start paying as well. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, this has been around for a number of years, and mm -hmm. seems to be a repeated question all the time by mm -hmm. municipal governments to share equally with the urban centers versus the rural centers. 
one of the things that, if I may add something to that, one of the things that's increasingly becoming a challenge for the members, the RCMP members, and the jurisdictions that pay for their services is that with the drug addiction problem and the RCMP members seem to be the only agency that can transport uh, patients to Winnipeg, uh, pick them up in DePaul, take them to Winnipeg. And it's, as we, we met with an RCP member in Winnipegosis uh, here just the other day in council that he spent 34 hours with one individual. The, the rationale for me telling you this story is that because of the increase of fentanyl and all the other drugs that we RCMP members are the only jurisdiction that seem to be able to be given that authority to spend with the patient. Where other provinces, they now allocate it to other agencies, whether it be the sheriff or some form of. So I think that is something the justice minister has heard numerous times that we need to be a little bit more uh, creative of providing services the RCMP members do X, but they, they need to be somewhat replaced by some other services, whether it be a sheriff or other kind of legal authority to do the appropriate mm -hmm. service, rather than tie up sitting next to the I thought I thought they had a contingency plan a couple right. of years ago. Not, um, not that I'm aware of, uh, Dwayne. I think the, the question was that there's nothing in the legislature that says that Somebody other than RCMP members can be responsible. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray, did you? Uh, I, I did, and I, I, there was another one that I intended, but I forgot until now. Okay. Thank God Ron mentioned yeah. something that triggered me. Yeah. Um, the next <laughs> is Has the AMM set out a position with respect to the Manitoba School Board review? They have nothing that I've seen, Dave. Um, I think they were kind of waiting for more downloaded information. Uh, well, if they wait until the end of June, they won't have to worry because it'll be over. Yeah. So but, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to have them at the a week in your meeting a week from now to actually formulate a position and advance it. And I'm going to suggest it should be that for the most part. And I, you know, I don't want to speak for places in the south where it may be appropriate for there to be merger of, of school divisions because I don't know them well enough to do that. But I can tell you that here, it would not be a positive thing to have a merger of this school division, particularly if the idea was to go to regional type school divisions. It would, quite candidly, doing away with school divisions would be better than the alternative of having regional school divisions. But but the AMF needs to formulate a position. It doesn't make any difference what it is. It needs to formulate something. Um, otherwise, its purpose seems muted. Mm -hmm. The other one was, um, uh, you know, I know that we have a resolution with respect to this from the last conference. But has the AMM, it was interesting listening to you talk about the policing issue because which seems to be an AMM position and, and advance. That's an excellent situation. But it was interesting to listen to the Premier say at that conference that despite the fact that the reason that an extra 25%, or were four parts, right? 25, 25, 25, 25, of the uh, profits from marijuana taxation. And originally it was, it was originally there wasn't necessarily any splitting and then the federal government offered up 50% and the provinces, one of the provinces, this province, uh, led a charge saying that there were increased costs like policing. Um, it's interesting that um, that AMM's position is that you know, policing costs and so on, there's some other costs that are being associated. Um, that might be a good reason for us to advance along with our resolution that's called for sharing of those costs. I know that we have a store coming, apparently, but haven't been involved in, in any part of it as far as I know and haven't even heard um, of a, an application um, and so that's going to cause stressors um, once we get through budget. Anyway, I, I bring that to your attention. That's just for action. So, thank you so much, Dave. Any other questions or comments?
coming up to about a half an hour, so I think that we've had a pretty good discussion and some good points brought forward. Yes. I'm sure that you'll bring them forward, and I'm sure that you'll see a few of us at the June 12th uh, that maybe we can cover over some of those things, and uh, as well as maybe bring up a few other things as well. If there's any, I believe that there'll be some resolutions that can be brought forward at that time as well. The, the resolutions from Councils in the yeah. Parkland District have to be at the AMM office by June the first, okay. and then that would be uh, at that point in time they would be categorized at the AMM office, and then it would be at the June district meeting that the discussions will happen on okay. these resolutions. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. So, any closing words from you, uh, Ron? Well, uh, it's always uh, interesting to sit around and talk with different council. Thank you all for your thoughts. And uh, uh, the AMM organization is a great organization. They're a great lobby organization. I guess there were pitfalls that occurred to happen. To your point, Dave, I, uh, I, I did I did notice that coffee break thing. I was not impressed either. I totally agree. But uh, we, uh, I, I think we're we're trying to make some inroads with the the present government, uh, and it's not because of any particular political strength, but we are uh, a diplomatic lobby group. Uh, as far as the education component goes, I'm going to be in Dauphin on Saturday, May the 11th. I'm looking forward to a busload of Swan River and area residents showing up to uh, lobby uh, the importance of uh, school and education. The, present system needs to stay in place as far as the trustees, uh, uh, local trustees involved in decision making, I think is very key, and we don't want to lose that importance. <clears throat> so let me uh, thank council for their time, uh, allowing a half an hour for me to be here, and it's, it's a pleasure seeing uh, very familiar faces in the last number of years again. So uh, have a great meeting, everyone and look forward to seeing you guys in June. If not any sooner, that would even be greater. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Also, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to 6.1, just some information there that on the previous uh, resolution on that building permit 219, and that was the, the value, I guess, that that was allowed, 135. Just for council's information, uh, so the, uh, uh, resolve that the Superintendent of Works report be received, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor uh, Lantoni. All, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, so questions to Derek on that, I guess. Where are we? 7.1. Why? We just finished four. 4.1, okay. and then we receptions, petitions, we don't have communications, just the, the value of the building permits, 219, and then 7 is reports of committee, the first one, 7.1, superintendent, don't work this report. Okay. Don't we have to deal with the things that are contained in communication? Am I missing something? That's just information for council on a building permit several meetings ago that had uh, to be determined as the value. I'm just okay. informing council. Are you in the right meeting, Councillor Gray? There was two. There's big. two uh, meetings. We have one for on on oh, all right. that, one for the 7th and one for the... Oh, there right. you go. The other way around. Sorry. I was, it, it called up a different meeting, I guess, or I must have tapped the wrong button, I don't know. So, I can go back to 6.1 if you have any I, I, questions. No, 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 I, I just, I, it, I had a different agenda for me. I apologize. Okay, so on the superintendent works report. Councillor Gloria. Um, on the paving work that was done last year in the southeast corner there, and there was some remediation work or uh, deficiencies, I guess, after the winter, have, have, do we have a plan on that? Uh, I've sent pictures and everything that they believe. Okay. And they have responded, uh, but we have to have a discussion on exactly what our solutions are. But we, you, you and Maple Leaf will have a discussion. Yeah. Okay, okay. Councilman Tony. 
I have two questions actually. <clears throat> what is the, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it says, well, it's supposed to say first, received first ferric sulf, sulfate load? Uh, yeah, that is to to lower our phosphorus levels in our lagoon. Okay. We ordered a ferric sulfate, and yes, that should be a first. Got it. And then my second question was in regards to um, unloading the recycling carts and dumpsters at the yard site. What is how is that going? And what is um, form of communication to residents and businesses, commercial for for this operation? Uh, so yeah, the carts are being unloaded in the works yard site, and uh, OSS plans to to lay out those carts right through town along their routes, and in with the cart will be given an information package, and we want we've, we've discussed having that some form of that information package on in the paper, <laughs> and maybe having a paragraph on the radio, whatever we can. It's hard to describe. We don't want to start naming the rules on the radio, but uh, if we can, if we can use it, we will. But uh, yeah, we're basically on a, an ad in the paper with the same rules, but everyone will be given uh, the information package with their cards. So, so somebody is in just in regards to that somebody will be going door to door with these carts. The truck drops off the cart at the front of the house, and with the cart is the information package. So okay. people have to do some work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you want to respond to this? Well, I just so want. Councillor Freeze, you were next, but I'll let Councillor. Uh, no, go ahead. Boyer because it's on. not about the dumpsters. Okay, go ahead. So people will. We're assuming people will see a dumpster in front of their house and know to go bring it in. Uh, yeah. That well, we, we're going to have to get it in the paper beforehand. We want. We need to have something in the paper prior to those cards going out. That's the okay. plan. Okay. Yeah, uh, at yeah. least uh, there has to be a pre communication because I would go and investigate if somebody dropped off a brick. I don't know if everybody would. And it might end up with dumpsters sitting there for a week. You know, I, I, I don't know. Can I come yeah. back to Council one time? Sorry, I just want to talk about that too. I think that we, we um, I'd like to see Council in, in terms of a media release of some sort, whether or not it's a, maybe we could do, maybe Council could do a, a a video of some sort with that, but I, I don't know if it needs to go to the media committee, but that'd be pretty cool, pretty informative if council could do a demonstration and have that long prior to um, put that on the website as a video. Yeah, yeah. yeah I kind of like that idea if we can work with OSS on something like that. Can you mention that to them? That we can work something out? Like a video? Yeah. Like, well, you guys can, we, guys can do your video. I don't, we don't need that. To we don't need them. We just want a cart, and maybe we can do it in somebody's driveway and say, "This is going to be the process. This will show up on your curb. You know, we're going to take it in. You read the pamphlet and go over it." I, I, I would just like to see us being more ahead of those type of things. I like that yeah. idea. Uh, Councilor Friesen and Councilor White. I'm just wondering about the electrical drawings and the exposed wire at the skate park. What's that about? Uh, it ended up just being a nothing basically it was capped and buried but it was it was a wire coming out of the ground oh and we just called an electrician to make sure it was handled properly okay okay Councillor uh, white yeah uh, communication is always a, a vital thing and i appreciate that you want to put it in the paper i support the paper concept i don't think it's anywhere near <laughs> enough like we had that meeting those of us who could attend it last week we had 50 people so i'm thinking <laughs> i'm thinking of facebook which is free i think at valley biz Generally, I think of our water bills, which go out. Everybody gets a water bill that could be in there. And I, as you mentioned, it could be in the website. So I was looking at the thing relative to the recreation meeting. It was about this big up in the left hand corner. And I knew it was coming, and I missed it when I read the papers. I, if these things are really important, which they are, we have to do a better job, in my mind, of communication. Councilor Wright. <coughs> Two things because I, I don't really care about the, the nuts and bolts stuff, but I do have some process questions. Um, these are OSS materials, right? Yeah. And it's their responsibility to do this stuff. So why do we pay for the advertising? I'm not getting this. Uh, why isn't it their job to make sure that people know what they're doing? 
Isn't that part of their contract? Uh, that they would provide information of how it works to the people. And I think, uh, here's the problem. We're going to do a little bit. And then people are going to say, why didn't you do more? But if we're not even, it's not really our job. It, we've already contracted with somebody to do it. There's a danger in us taking on ownership of something because I don't think Joe Public is going to come and say, where's OSS so I can go scream at them? I could be wrong. But I suspect they're going to say the exact opposite. They're going to just start screaming at you or your staff um, about how come my recycling wasn't picked up or how come this or how come that. And, and I really think you need to speak with OSS and say to them, your plan to dump off dumpsters with stuff inside them that people are going to pick up and read is seriously flawed. And you need to rethink that because I don't think people are going to do that. I mean, in my case, you will, because my wife doesn't leave the house. And when she does, she, <laughs> she'll see a dumpster at the end of the driveway and go pick it up. But, you know, at me, if you put it right in the middle, so I had to drive, I couldn't drive around it, then I would pick it up. But a lot of people won't. And, they, and if they do, they're not going to look inside. So what's going to happen is about two thirds of the booklets that they put inside are going to end up as part of recycling, I think. Anyway, that's, I think it's always that's this responsibility. I don't think, I, I do think we need to do a better job of communication. So don't get me wrong. I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Councilor Wright, at all. I think you're exactly right. I just don't think we should take ownership of things that aren't really our problem because we're going to, we're going to be the ones who are tarred and feathered about the lack of communication. Now, that doesn't mean we maybe shouldn't anyway if they're negligent, but maybe we maybe we build that back. I have a second question, though. That's an idea. Go ahead. The, the second question is in terms of Councillor Delorier's um, question. And again, I, you know, I, there are things I'm not great at and details like that I'm not great at. But one of the things I do sort of have an interest in is have we amended our contacts so that, because your comment about we have to talk to them about what the plans are for fixing it are eerily reminiscent of things about the pool and so on. And and I suspect because we do a lot of business with Maple, with Maple Leaf that they'll probably be able to be negotiated with. But yeah. it, we really need to change the contract to say that if, you, if there's a problem, you have to fix it. I, I don't know what we need to do for, like I, and I assume that it wasn't done because we hadn't talked about this by the there's, time last year, they did. But this there. this coming new year, our contract needs to be changed so that the, and they need to be aware that if there's a problem, this is not a negotiation. This is you have to fix the problem. Like we're, right. we're willing to work with you, but you, if we contract with someone to do cement work, and the cement work isn't right, the solution is come make it right. Right, but the problem has to be their problem. This, well, this what was your problem would it be? It weeded the base, and there was also a pretty serious surveying state problem. Maybe the problem. <clears throat> that has to be determined and negotiated. Okay. So, so yeah. Councilor Montgomery, then Councilor Boyle. Um, I, I got a few more to go on, but I'll I'll start with the one with the Councilor Gray in regards to the information that we forward. I guess I have a my vision was it's a little bit different of a take than. I think what the information that you wanted to to portray but anyway i have different views on that i just want to express that and i think that we could do a, a very good job without taking owner portraying the message without taking ownership of it okay. the second question in regards to recycling as well is how did everything go mr pool with the co-op um i know that it's on here and i did hear that there was um, some issues and i'm hoping that those got rectified and, and i'm hoping that Obviously, the co-op is one of our biggest users. carrier users, so just want to make sure that that went well. It did. The meeting went well. We we responded to their their requests, and uh, well, one of them is going to take some time, but uh, yeah, we've got a plan to to help them with their issues. And uh, outside of waste and recycling, they had some curb better issues that that we also will evaluate with the rest of. Issues in town. Okay. Can I go on with my other questions? Certainly. Okay. okay. And then, just in regards to the other point with the uh, fire chief and demolition of burnt buildings, can you just elaborate a little bit on on that one? 
Uh, I guess in my email to council this afternoon, it's just something that needs to be discussed in our budget. We have three houses that I guess are eligible, for the lack of a better term, in our bylaw that we can tear down. Uh, we don't own any of them. Uh, all of them will be, you know, the cost to the process is we demolish it, charge the cost back to the get the lots. Yeah. And Nobody's paying the cost. No, they would already if, if they could. So, like, a, there's no there's no revenue line here. It's going to go to tax sale and get the properties. So, in, in regards to that, when we do go to tax sale, do we do we have the right to reserve? The, the the cost of demolition so that lot essentially is going to be the cost of the demolition yeah plus the back taxes plus, plus the back taxes That's but good. the so it's not in the end it'll come out as a wash we're not going to make a profit on it but we'll get we should recoup our money if if the loss if the lot is sold that's if we can sell it for that amount but i thought we had a reserve on it or we don't we someone has to be willing to pay that amount yeah. so if nobody well, so then we some... hold on to it if the reserve isn't met. Have, are we in the situation? What's I guess like, I'm not familiar. We with usually sell the past. our lots. We do. Okay. Oh. Councillor Morio. Um, just back to the the paving for Maple Leaf last year. You mentioned survey mistake. Didn't they re we pay to have them survey that? Because our survey equipment wasn't up to snuff, so they had to, we paid significant dollars to have them resurvey it. Yeah, but they're, they're also with that they it was designed differently. Everything moved, so they couldn't. We had our our uh, uh, storm sewers at a certain elevation. They had them lower. They like we they just had a, a deeper grade. And they, they kept the curves up as high as they could, but uh, ultimately 15 loads of, uh, on two shoots, 12 loads of ABs went out. So that was a discussion during construction. Do we have to stop now and redo this uh, between myself and the superintendent? We chose that it did not go down deep enough for the amount of base that we had put in. Uh, it was compact and good. There were sparks flying when we were doing it. Uh, all signs were showing. And, you know, I built a lot of roads that uh, it was fine. We got some movement. We know that that area is a swamp. It was mossy, peat moss underneath. But uh, we did have geotextiles. I, you know, I, I, I can't explain this in five minutes now. I'm pretty sure this has to be done on a report. But uh, there's issues. And, uh, we have to discuss this. Oh, my, my, my concern or question was is that um, now that you're at a lot, there's more information there since it was like a survey mistake and we had paid them to resurvey it because our equipment wasn't adequate. But there's more to the story than just basic survey. Councilor Gray? Oh, I, I just, and, my only issue is for, for the future that we have contracts that cover this. Okay. And that, so, yeah. that's, that's part of. That's how we do things. We do things without spending money. We do things as cheap as possible. That's that's what's been ingrained into my head. And I know I know that it's just the process, and this is how we learn. But uh, it's how we you know we didn't have a whole contract for base surveying everything done in there because we broke it apart because it would, we would save costs. In the long run, we didn't. We may not. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Yeah. What's the alternative? Resolve that the fire chief's report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Lentoni. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 2018 police report resolved that the 2018 Swan River Detachment RCMP police report be received. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Nope. Nope. Any discussion? Uh, Council Morio. Uh, looking at the report again, I am quite disappointed in our local detachment again that they're not following the agreed upon uh, reporting structure that was. 
it's supposed to be sent out to them. Um, so I guess um, the Protective Service Committee will have that chat with the new staff sergeant there and provide them a copy of the blank reporting form that um, I think as council expects them to use as with the rest of the province. So as I understand that it was distributed widely and completely to all detachments in the province to be using the form and this is not the form. So. Okay. I did uh, speak with uh, the Staff Sergeant Campbell on Monday and, and uh, he showed me these reports and I mentioned a little bit about that so I think your uh, chairperson should be calling a meeting shortly with uh, the Staff Sergeant to have some of those discussions. Okay. Councillor Grady, do you have a question? Well, I have a comment on that because, uh, I, you know, and again, maybe I'm missing it, but it, isn't the process we should use that the CAO will write to the detachment commander that, that, that we shouldn't be involved in those discussions any more than I should be involved in discussions with, say, the Stan Peter, the chair rep, that the, the, the staff should be involved in that and, and that we should stay out of it because it cannot work well if there are multiple messages and and the reality is our committees should require things but and maybe even get reports but I don't know that the person to whom they report all of those people report is the CAO in my view and it would be more helpful to have the CAO fight than for us to individually start right but that was what I understood we agreed before maybe I'm missing something no, and, and I think that probably makes lots of sense, you know, like sometimes we, we fall back to where we did things before, but uh, be reminded, but definitely I think that's probably a good idea. It doesn't mean that the, the committee doesn't, you know... No, no, they can meet with them and they can have them come there. I, I'm not saying that you should don't need information. I'm just saying that in terms of giving direction, if we start doing it that way, what happens invariably, and it may not happen in this case because I know Constable Moore is incredibly careful, but, uh, but it's possible. Councillor White, who's in charge, so, <laughs> so I'm not so sure. Anyway, sorry, I apologize in advance. Um, but the the reality is that we the process is the process, and we should use that process, and we should kick, kick, not get ourselves drawn into that. Because when when we become involved, when you write a letter, when I write a letter, when somebody on behalf of council writes a letter, it seems to me that that has to carry a different weight than just routine complaints. It has to be, this is now substantial. We're writing to the D Division Commander, we're writing to the Minister of Justice, we're writing to the Premier, we're not writing to <coughs> the second Lieutenant Staff member. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I, I think that it all was touched on in that um, at this time. I don't think Councillor White that a, a meeting needs to be called for that because Mr. Poole will look after that just to reiterate that but uh if we do have something else to discuss i'm sure you can call it call a meeting i've got three though sorry okay so any further discussion all in favor it's carried okay 7.23 uh cao and uh council reports we'll start with councilor gray sure well uh, we've had an incredibly busy two weeks as council. Um, we've had, I think, two or three budget meetings. Um, and I'm sure somebody, everybody will comment on those and how stressful those are. Um, and, um, but uh, again, I think for everyone's benefit, um, we are going to have significant increases, it seems obvious, in taxes. And we're going to have some restrictions in what we can do. Um, the reality is that we have started to move towards a principle-centered process for determining budgets, which includes um, things like we're going to pare away as we go. And that's an incredibly helpful and necessary piece of the equation. Uh, if we don't do that, it seems to be self-evident that we will this problem will be repeated at infinitum. Um, we had what I considered to be quite a successful pool meeting. Um, the public seemed receptive, and I want to thank 
preparing for coming and covering it and, and the extraordinary the lengthy report um, that was in the um, paper uh, that went over it so everybody who wasn't there got all of the information um, it is not a good situation i think we all know that already and the community knows that and we've asked which brings me to the to segue into the next piece, which is we had a recreation committee meeting, gave instructions that we needed significant cuts in recreation, which can come only from reductions in services. There was a bit of a testy part where CFO um, seemingly thought that we were trying to reduce expenses without uh, redu corresponding reductions in um, services. That I must assure you is not certainly my intention and I have not heard a single councillor who suggested that that we have some miraculous system that would allow us to cut expenditures but not cut um, services that will happen I think self-evidently um, the we I also had a meeting with the Recreation Commission um, which is under a bit of stress given that the government has changed the funding process and we aren't sure exactly how that will play out or what its purpose is there is a meeting May 22nd, I don't remember. It may be a day I can't be here, I can't remember. Well, May 27th maybe. There is a meeting May 27th, another one in June, um, about um, the future of the Recreation Commission. So the first one will be a planning session. So unless, Constable Wintoni and Constable Gloria, unless um, you find replacements, citizen replacements from the town of Swan River or May 20, whatever date it is, and Patty will have to get to the date. We need you there because we're going to be planning for the, a bigger meeting, which is a community based meeting in June that talks about the future of recreation across the valley um, and hopes to build a consensus on the notion that that's one of those services which needs to be valley wide, not just focused on in individual municipalities. Um, there's more to that. There is, of course, in their budget, a proposed increase. Um, and one of the things that has stalled that request um, is me, because just like with RISE and with Watershed and with, let's come into settlement services in a moment, um, the process for requesting monies from council has to be, here's what we're going to do and here's what we're going to achieve and here's how we're going to be measured uh, and here's why you need to support us with this amount of money not just here's our money, here's our budget because we've done this before. Um, and we all know they do, every, all those organizations do good works, but that's not really the process that should be followed by this or any other council. Um, settlement Services had a meeting last night. Um, um, it is a unique board process. Um, um, maybe, maybe, Council Friesen, in many ways, is better suited to be on that board than I am. It, it, it was, it, it's, a, it's a unique process. Um, they cut their request this year because they've got a bunch of extra money from the province, a, a ton of extra money, and there's a proposal in to expand what they do even past that. Um, but, but what they've done is essentially found, to do, found ways to do a bunch of necessary events this one over way as cheaply as possible without any advertising or any other commitment and and i have to try, i'm going to be trying to tell them that for the next year they might want to rethink that process in terms of doing things on a certain level of quality level and whatever we have to pay we have to pay it may be that we won't be able to give them more money but um, certainly they should rethink the way they do that and and but they are an incredibly good organization and they run an incredibly efficient ship there I have to tell you although I should tell you that the the um, executive director not the executive director the um, worker uh, is on going on that leave on Friday you yeah yeah um, I, I, I'm not going to try and say the last name and and they replaced her with two men who are going to share her job and so <laughs> David Hish, who was at the dinner made the joke that he wanted to um, criticize whoever made the decision to hire those two people because it reinforced the stereotype that it took two men to do when you want a woman's job. Um, and lastly, of course, we um, had interviews with the CAO and we'll be discussing that, I presume, in the in-camera session that follows. Um, those are the meetings we've had, or I've had, which I think total um, eight of the 14 days. Um, I do want to talk about the watershed. I'm not sure if we should talk about it here. Um, 
I don't know. I haven't heard anything further on the on the lawsuits, and so I'm hoping that Mr. Gould's heard something more, or that we have something. Uh, as you're aware, we have we there are uh, there is. I, I'm not sure if we had a, a finalization on the issues of the fire department. Uh, yeah. Are we going to discuss about that? Are we going to discuss that in, in camera as well? I can update you. Okay, and lastly, um, we have two major policy issues that I don't think Council has talked about, um, but we may be moving towards um, meetings. And there are others that I'm sure I can think of. Um, we have an Indigenous Services Committee. We have actually two meetings that you're proposing, neither of which I can attend. I'm but, sorry. Well, that'll be a choice, whatever. <laughs> but, but more importantly, before we go to those meetings, the whole of Council should discuss before we get into a meeting. The same with, I, I'm told that there's another meeting with the Swan Valley, about the Swan Valley School Division, about the School Division Review. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm certainly, certainly not part of it, but more importantly, uh, we've had no discussion about what our position is. And, and I'm concerned that it is not, it is not an appropriate process for individuals to, on their own, come up with what the plan is, it is much more appropriate for us to discuss those. And we've had no discussion on that. So I don't know if there's another part of the agenda that I'm missing that is where we're going to discuss it, or there's some other process, maybe there is, but if there isn't, um, that makes me incredibly unhappy. I was going to mention that later. You're going to mention in terms of us having a, a yeah. process for, for no, coming up with a policy? No, we're going to talk about that, so. Okay, yeah. well, we'll see. Oh, I have a question regarding him. A couple of items, but did I hear correctly that district rec is to expect a budget increase from district rec? Well, they they were proposed. Uh, you were there. They they proposed. I don't know. Almost, almost double, I think. Well, they wanted a, a what program or something. Do you remember what it was? I <clears throat> I was uh, actually going to say the same as Mr. <laughs> Councillor Delore. Yeah, I, I was I either there. either I missed a meeting because I'm yeah, not sure I'm following. It. No, he was up the meeting if you were at. But anyway, and I was there. Yeah, both of you were there. But anyway, the because we only had two, and the first nope. one didn't have. One. I think that was only it. Yeah, you we were you guys two. you guys there. didn't have no well, you, you didn't have one. You were at the first one, and and that there was no budget discussed at that one. And the second one, they talked about the the need for a programmer, if you remember. Which, yeah. Which because there's no budget for that necessarily causes an increase in the budget. Should we choose to? Well, no, no. I, all I'm yeah. saying is that there, when the request comes, mm -hmm. okay. So let me go back over it because I, I was unclear, obviously, and I'll yeah. make it clear. And especially because I've got two colleagues who were present, and they're the ones who are asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. It's a bit stunning to tell you the truth. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, so they, the proposal came in with a number of things, which included a program, a full-time programmer for the next year, which had forty some thousand dollars. And then there's some other costs that go with that because what's the point of having a programmer unless you actually have programs that are attached to it? And so my question was, and I think both of you agreed, that that was not an appropriate process to simply add on a programmer without any parameter on what we were going to achieve with it, how that was going to work in, what the cost sharing arrangements were going to be, that, that, that's, that you don't just say, here's the programmer, you say, here's what we need and here's why, and there's a process for doing these things where you thoughtfully go through what the process is and what the needs are and how this will achieve needs that can't otherwise be achieved. And so that's installed. And then the government came in with this change. And so now we're going to go into a different process to decide what the future of recreation is for the Valley and whether or not the Recreation Commission has any value in it. So it's it's yes. it's been deferred, but it's okay. But but for 2019, there's no budget increase. We're not hiring a programmer in 2019. Well, okay. The the proposal, the budget hasn't come from Swan Valley Rec Commission at all. Mm -hmm. The proposal that comes in that came from Patty, who's who's our employee, but works for them, yeah. and from the chairman, as you'll recall, called for that. Um, if we required them to provide us with a budget today, it would. Incre include that request, we would have to either reject it or increase the budget or whatever we would do. So I don't know whether it's going to increase in 2019. I do know that the process won't be completed until June. Um, and so the, the hiring wouldn't take place before then because there's been no approval before that. 
and we and I don't know what the outcome will be, and I don't know what the outcome. And even if there is, it would require because we're. I would hope that sometime before the 15th of June, we are going to actually have a budget passed, given that we will then be halfway through the freaking year. And it seems to me that passing a budget halfway through the year is less than optimal. Um, that, that in the result, um, um, if we did have any of that implemented, it would have to take, it would take the process of a separate amending resolution for council in terms of either increasing spending or increasing uh, or increasing borrowing or increasing uh, some depletion of some other reserve because we would not at that point be able to increase taxation okay thank you Does that mean that as clear as i could or yeah. as much as i could th thank you <laughs> i do recall that oh thank well, you no I, I apparently i've gone <laughs> okay anyway. I, I i guess the, the difference is this is about year number five that they've asked for a programmer so i get i guess that's why it's all it, in my mind it was same old song and dance type thing so that's why I, when you said that it was we're well, going to have a programmer I, I will tell you this uh, yeah. the, for the same i have problems with the a number of things that are coming up and with a number of other requests that we've addressed for the same reason so uh, I'm not sure that consistency has been our hallmark, but anyway, we'll we'll get to that in other debates. Council White, I would, I'll try to be very brief because I have some from prior to the last meeting. But I'll be quick. Uh, I went to the Swan Valley Business Consortium and big concern with diabetes in our community. Their community, they're trying to deal with that, and a lot of good information on the echo buildings and their occupancy, who stays there when. Uh, the Animal Protection League, I think they're wonderful because they raise money for animals that don't have a place. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, Chuck Davidson came here and he is the Executive Director for the Chamber of Commerce at the Business Consortium. And the concept, as I understood, the way the Business Consortium, they're going to try to link ourselves more with the North because there's more money there, there's more activities there. I think I'm saying that right. Close? I think the Business Consortium is kind of separate from what oh, Chuck, Chuck yeah. does and, and, and the business consortium is more for swan river chuck is more for manitoba manitoba and connecting swan river with the north yes. campaign sorry go ahead no they're all tied together we spent a meeting with uh, councillor friesen and a couple of ladies and we're trying to get together and make plans to try to make the community better for our agent which i guess i'm one of them i went to manitoba snowmobile association meeting also and a good turnout and one of the concepts we're talking about all sleds would have a compulsory snowman pass which would give a lot more money to snowman which would make their trails better which would bring theoretically be more community people to more sled people to our community and medical services so myself and uh council morial uh council kalsnick from sun valley west the land owner and a realtor met and talked about the concept of the possibility of Purchasing that land down by the clinic, which is interesting. Uh, the Community Foundation, what a wonderful, went to their uh, granting evening. They're doing some great stuff with money for our community. PMH Shared Services, uh, part of the holdup with the discussions relative to the CT scan, deals specifically with the, the process of amalgamation with shared services and the others. It's still a little up in the air, it's not complete yet, so they're not ready to make a commitment to the CT scan. If I'm saying this wrong, please let me know. But there's some optimism that once this happened, it may happen. Uh, safe house, uh, the girls are staying the course, same as ever. Uh, Swan Valley School Division, and it, I'm glad that uh, Councillor uh, Gray just said, uh, David, uh, Councillor Morial, myself, or six other representatives met at the school board on the night of the rec committee meeting relative to the pool. Uh, I was a little disappointed it wasn't mentioned that uh, David and I were at another meeting at that same time, so the conflict, so we went representing our council as we were trustees at the, at the meeting with the pool. And uh, one of the things that Council Gray, I think you're bang on there, I don't think we as a, there's four or five are still talking, but as a council, we had met collectively because we're going to Dauphin on this Friday night at six o'clock to meet with that, uh, that entity to talk about what, what this council thinks about the amalgamation. Uh, I went to a rec committee meeting, uh, which I enjoyed. I just can't compliment you guys. Uh, when I was on that board, it's a tough job, lots of tough decisions, and uh, quite convoluted. 
Uh, the Premier's in town, I had a chance to talk to him about the CT scan, and uh, I remain optimistic. I, obviously, we've all been to the budget meetings. I did the CAO interview, as most of us did. And uh, so another school division, Dave, uh, John, and myself had a meeting at uh, a local eatery and looking at trying to make plans, and I think we've got some good plans happening in that regard. I talked by a phone with Dr. Andani very recently, and uh, we have a dentist who wants to come here, and uh, we're trying to negotiate with him. There's no money even mentioned, and uh, Dr. Bell, a medical doctor, and the dentist needs an anesthetist. An anesthetist needs more work, so I think we can uh, work together collaboratively to make that happen. Then uh, John and Councilor, uh, when Tony and I met with Dr. Strait, talking about some dog issues, and we'll have to tighten that up uh, sooner than later. And then the straw board, I don't know what the term is, just the straw processing where they make paper, it's not board. And I sent that out to people on the economic committee. And apparently they, they were looking at Yorkton, but Yorkton is probably 99% canola right now. This doesn't have straw. And there's an option that we have a lot of straw with the wheat that we grow up here still too. So, busy, busy, busy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Deloitte. Uh, a couple of budget meetings attended, and I guess I'm going to look straight into the count into the camera and let people know there will be a tax increase if people didn't know that already. So I encourage people to come out to the public meeting that will be announced shortly with regards to the budget. Um, also had a um, hold on a second. <coughs> At the pool meeting, um, I guess we had a better than ex than what I expected any return. So I was really happy about that. Um, it shows that people do care about the facility, and uh, hopefully we can we can find the savings we need to find without causing too many people too much pain. Um, but with the state of of what the pool costs us, we will have to uh, uh, find the savings that we need. Uh, last week we had the interview with the CAO uh, candidate and uh, also want to give a shout out to the kids at Taylor School. What an amazing play they did uh, Friday and Saturday night. It pretty uh, pretty high level production for, for grade four and five kids. So it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty neat to see. And that's it for me. Okay, Councilman Tony. I had a, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a few meetings um, throughout the last few weeks more than I have fingers to count but um, <laughs> um, had the um, meeting with the with Mr. Strait in the vet clinic in regards to some dog issues and I think that we need to as a committee look at that and, and I have some ideas that I've come up with that that I think we can we can make work in regards to the pool meeting and the recreation meeting it was uh, it was impressive to see how many people did come out and have and voice their concerns in regards to the facility. Um, one of the reoccurring themes that the public brought forward was the lack of advertising and promotional with that. So I'm hoping that we um, will look at that in, in, in terms of what our committee can maybe propose in, in the budget with that as well. Um, in regards to what Councillor said in regards to expanding that clinic, um, to the north and looking at some property there. Um, I mean, I will be interested to see what that feasibility study comes in at because I think that we should look at um, our original thoughts that council had many years ago with that. I also did meet with the Snowmobile Association um, in regards to the trail starting from Swan River all the way up to Churchill. Um, which is a, is a fantastic idea, as well as with the Chamber and Chuck Davidson as well. Um, very smart man and, and very uh, informative and, and one of the key players in my, in my portfolio that I look up to, as well as the Business Consortium meeting. Um, great group of people there discussing local concerns. Um, in regards to the school division review meetings, um, yes, I was a part of, I was asked by the school division to be part of their team and now that the town has our, our sit down meeting with them as well, I would be 
I think that it's more than appropriate to have the entire council discuss all of our concerns and uh, relay the messages because, I mean, seven heads are better than one. So I, I, I look forward to that meeting as a group. Uh, first time going through the budget process, and yes, there will be tax increases. Um, and I don't want that to alarm anybody, but uh, tax increases are necessary for the view that our council is sharing to move forward and be be a progressive community. Um, and then I just want to talk one last point about rise, and I know that it's a, a hot topic among, amongst other municipalities, but I can't stress the importance that we have, um, the importance and the need for economic development. I think that that's going to show um, with right people in place, it's going to show growth within our community and within our valley as a whole. So I hope that um, rate payers do seek out their council and encourage them to, to pass the budget for economic development. And I promise you that I will work very hard to show measurables and to achieve measurables um, in the terms of economic development. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Mario. <clears throat> um, in this period, um, along with Councilor White on the 23rd, uh, he and I, as he had mentioned, attended the school board uh, meeting discussing the K-12 commission report um, that's province is going through right now. Um, a lot of the timelines are very tight uh, as from when the times they release information to when meetings are scheduled, things like that. So, um, so we are at that meeting it's to go through the six key, I guess, investigative points or questions that the commission is asking to go through what the division's response is, is going to be. And one of the recommendations or discussion points of the meeting was um, since the division um, only had 20 minutes to speak to the commission and then 10 minutes of question and answer, uh, the request was uh, made of us if we can see if we can lobby uh, to get a meeting with that commission. Um, so I had put in a request uh, with the commission of uh, His Worship um, and it initially it was turned down. Didn't take no good answer and ask for a review and support uh, for that, and we were granted um, a meeting with the commission also on May 10th. So, um, as Councillor Mantoni and uh, White have mentioned, um, there has been no formal response put together yet. We have ideas, but we need to meet with the entire council either later tonight or tomorrow um, uh, in timely to put together our speaking points, like as we did with AMM, um, so that we are organized and professional when we do go there um, and to bring back our concerns um, to the commission as to what we feel where the education and school boards and whatnot needs to, to go and what our strong feelings are so um, 25th to the 27th uh, Councillor Friesen and I along with uh, Stacey Greenwell from the Chamber of Commerce we attended the trade show in Flin Flon I feel it was a great success. We had um, conservatively a thousand plus contacts come through our booth that we talked to. Um, a lot of the questions was in regards to our doctors, how do they can make contact with our physicians here to become their family physicians from the ball, or, pardon me, Flin Flon, and how did they, uh, we managed to uh, get the clinic and be successful in the recruiting model that we want. Um, so there will be some contact um, potentially from their community reaching out to us to uh, discuss how we manage that. Um, a lot of uh, questions and interest in 55 plus housing in Swan River and the Valley. Um, and I think uh, Councillor Friesen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the very first night we were there, I think we were mauled by the Displayers there as to why Swan River doesn't have a trade show that they can um, display their wares and product in our valley and come there. So I think uh, Stacey Grindle is going to be bringing that back and to the Chamber of Commerce and whatnot to uh, look at potentially having a trade show here in Swan River uh, next year um, due to the request. Uh, but it was a very uh, 
a long three days, um, but it was a very well um, spent time making a lot of contacts and it's amazing how many um, of their aging population is looking south and having Swan River as a final destination to uh, retire. Along with that, we have the budget and it's no secret. Um, it is a very tough budget um, due to the lack. We have to look at potential revenue options down, maybe not this year, um, but down in the future, what can we do to generate revenue? Well, besides just general mill taxes. Um, but uh, as other councillors have said, um, it's either it's a tax increase along with reduction of services or a combination of both. Um, there's just no way around it. Um, we're at that point and tough decisions have to be made. So if anybody has thoughts, input, come to the public hearing, talk to myself or any other council. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Council Priest. Can I just say ditto, 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 ditto? Because that's pretty much <clears throat> what David just said. Councillor Morio, sorry. I enjoyed the weekend with uh, Stacy. She is just a very <coughs> bubbly, outgoing person, and uh, she's easy to be around. And we, just, we had a good visit with a lot of people. Uh, Bill Majeski's daughter was there. She came up and welcomed us like we were, you know, like friends. I guess we are. Um, other than uh, the budget meetings, um, I had a chit chat with the president of the Lions, and they seem very interested in this um, assisted living complex to be built and would like me to come to one of their meetings as an age friendly rep, maybe with Councillor White. And um, just put forward what we would like to have in Swan River. And just a side note, the uh, age friendly is for young and old, not just old. Also, uh, kudos to the kids at Taylor School and the teachers. It was a fantastic uh, performance. Those kids did wonderful. And uh, grade twos and threes were the choir, and they did an excellent job too. I'm really interested in this straw processing plant, so maybe I could talk to you about that after. Or I think that would be a good thing. Um, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Just to. Um on one of your topics, Councillor Fries, and in regards to the Lions Plaza, I think that um, if you if you're willing and want to have that discussion with the Economic Development and Rise Group as well, I think that there's ways that we could um, assist <coughs> uh, assist with that as well. Great, more and, the merrier. And just in regards to that straw plant, that is a very interesting topic where they uh, also use um, pulp. Um, material as well in that product so there's lots of information on that and it's would be a, a fantastic resource to <coughs> to bring to to our area we um, yeah I agree. economic development and a new and an EDO would help solidify that process <laughs> and <White>. what? <clears throat> Sorry. An, an economic development perspective uh, Robbie Scales, as many of you know, has been working with uh, Red Osier Dogwood now for roughly 20 years. And what he told me the other day is many of the universities are really excited about it now. And hypothetically, that's a fair word this time, the, the evolution of that particular product may replace antibiotics and with bacterial resistant, antibiotic resistant bacteria. It's a phenomenal potential. And a young man in our town has done most of the legwork right now. He's costly optimistic. It's getting closer. He has patents in Canada, the United States, and Europe. And, and if he, of course, I'm assuming he would love to build his business here. So he's uh, made a liaison with uh, Ryan Immaker, another young businessman who has vision. The two boys, the young men, are going to get together and talk about how they can uh, work together. Good. Okay, so for me, um, 
I guess first of all, thank uh, Council Morio and Councilor Friesen with Stacy for going up to Flint Pond and showcasing Swan River and maybe enticing a few people to move down to the Swan River Valley. And, and also uh, Bill Potten and her team right. and Thompson this weekend. Okay, right. That's not their head on this weekend. And then thank you for Councilor Gray for conducting a meeting the other night for the recreation consultation and, and I think it went over very well. Um, obviously, there, there are some issues there that we have brought to the forefront, and, and the public now knows what there are, so there'll be f further discussion, but uh, we, we know what we have to deal with, and the public is fully aware uh, right now as far as that goes. As far as the budget goes, everybody's been talking about that. It, we've been hammering at this for a little while, you know, it's on the, the writing is on the wall, and, and it's not very easy around this table. And, and including most of our administration, the staff, and CFO, and CAO to, to deal with this, but uh, it's reality, and um, and we'll get through it, but it's been tough, and I, I, I'm sure that a few of you have lost a, a little bit of sleep over this too, because we have to live in this community too, and it impacts us as well. Uh, as far as any uh, boards that I've been to, or meetings. Uh, my, I actually attended my very first veterinarian services uh, meeting, so that was uh, a little bit interesting. And uh, so I'm presenting that the, the levies for 2019 are not going to change. They're going to be still 59 and I'll present that to the CEO right after I'm the CEO of, I'm done. Um, I asked how they came up with, uh, how they come up with the allocations, because I knew that was going to be a question. And based on, it's actually based on census and animal data uh, and population and live, uh, population and livestock. So um, the current formula is what they have set out is actually was set out by the province and they have followed that. Um, but um, they haven't updated it for a little while. So they are willing now to relook at it in 2019 to 2000 and, um, 20 and beyond. So I do have these two reports here that you can upload to AllNet and you can present the, uh, the, uh, the levies to uh, our CFO. I also asked, because some rate payers have asked me, said, well, you know, why are you funding uh, a private, you know, uh, company that's running a vet clinic and, and everybody understands that the, we own the building, the lab and all that, and, and we fund a little bit of that uh, just to help to entice uh, rural veterinarian services, which some areas, Saskatchewan in particular, has a really hard time to do. So it's a good system in place, um, and uh, and people also question the rates. Well, the rates are actually set by the Provincial Board uh, Veterinarian Ser Services Commission, which is updated each year. So those rates are already set up. They don't set the rates, the, set, the rates are actually set by this commission. So uh, that was basically for, for my report, so go ahead. I'm sorry, I had a meeting with Communities at Care, and I just wanted to throw it out there that one of their big fundraisers, which is the Spooktoberfest in October, have always relied on the Little Woody crew to come in and do one of their big, and they are not doing it this year, so they're looking for a group or a, a bunch of people that would like to help out with the Communities in Bloom, Communities in Bloom, Communities that Care uh, Spooktoberfest. And if anybody is interested, uh, contact Lori Monroe, and she is at the Albert Sharp and Friendship Center. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Poole. Uh, obviously, working on the budget, a lot has been discussed on that. Hopefully, uh, I'm confident the, the situation in the office has improved to where we will not be in this situation next year. But uh, just as expected, working on a lot of new developments, new subdivision, uh, council can expect <coughs> stuff like that coming up in the agenda. Uh, conditional uh, uses, variations, they're all coming through. So I'm dealing with a lot of uh, formalities and, and those processes and reviewing uh, just the latest and some future bylaw possible changes to communities. Uh, yeah, just to keep it short for most of things. Okay. All right. So moving on, a council break. Well, I do have some comments or some questions or, or something, and and maybe they're 
Oh no, I don't hate someone. Four from my hurt, because I do. When are we going to do some planning? Because we're court, we're at eight, we weigh in through our mandate, and we've had one planning meeting that I'm aware of. Maybe we missed, maybe I missed one, maybe I was invited one or something. But outside of that, I thought that was one of our commitments early on. And and we had a process we were going to use. Um, and um, I one am taken aback to hear that we're going to be planning something on a presentation that's going to impact our community significantly for the first time on a Tuesday when the presentation is on a Friday. I thought there was a process we were going to use. I, I, I'll, I'll apologize for that because I was going to actually speak on that. I forgot. The on the education assessment, uh, we had Councilor Morio and Councilor White attend the school division uh, to hear their take on that. I believe that Councilor. And Tony's been speaking to uh, Kelly Real on, on that a little bit. So when we heard that we were going to have that spot on Friday, then I thought, you know, what we should do is actually, if we can, meet here tomorrow night to discuss that. Okay, I was kind of, I was going to actually mention that. But that uh, we when should... was that decided? What's that? When was there a meeting in on Friday of next week, of this week? When was that learned of? The... Because we shouldn't hear about it on Tuesday. About a planning meeting for Wednesday, should we? Or am I missing something? Or is that the process that we now use? No, I think we just found out last Friday. This is two days since we found out. So I got the, got the confirmation with the date and time would be May first, and I relayed that to to Councilor White and Mayor Jacobs. That's a week ago. Last Friday, four days ago. Yeah. May first is Wednesday. And this is our first chance to get to meet since then. That's not well, true at all. But uh, all the emails this morning were broken. Anyway, are we going to start meeting or not? The plan. I, I hope that we can meet tomorrow evening. Maybe I was unclear, and I'll be more clear. Are we going to start a process of regular meetings for planning or not? Yes, we can. Oh, well, are we? I know we can. And we had a okay. process. Okay, Councilor Gray will be meeting. Yes, the answer is yes. If that's what you're looking for. Then the question, my second question is, why are we meeting with individuals? Why aren't we referring those people to administration? If we have committees that meet and have people come in and give us presentation, that's fine. But it's all good. And I've, I've attempted on a couple different times with the Indigenous Relations Committee that I wanted to meet with council, but a lot of that time had been bumped because we were having budget meetings and a lot of the time that had been bumped. Again, I would hope that we can meet in the next couple of days, if it could be on tomorrow evening after the education assessment, or if it could be on Thursday night, because I have finally, after five months, have nailed down two dates with those two groups, okay? So that's the plan as far as me having meetings with any of the rest of council. If that satisfies what you're looking for. It doesn't, but we won't Okay, do it. I'm sorry. Councilor White. It's not that we have a meeting. I think all of us, including yourself, sir, <clears throat> have been meeting really, really regularly. And planning is extremely important. We all agree on that. But you yourself just said you've been seven out of ten days. We can't meet every night of the week, and some of us are meeting more often than that. So yeah, it's why but you can't create time that doesn't exist. So I compliment his worship because we now have a meeting Tuesday, Wednesday night, the eighth, which I've written down. We're planning. I, I don't imagine it take forever to look at the educational one, and we can probably do a bit of planning for the planning meeting at the same time. In my mind. Okay. So go ahead, Councilor Antoni. Just to add this up tomorrow. We are. I'm not available because I'm at a another function as well. And then I Are you done by eight o'clock? Because I'm only available at eight o'clock. Yes, we can work that. I'm hoping that that one's done. So eight o'clock on Wednesday. Eight o'clock yeah. Wednesday. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We can we can only we all can't be there, but we can certainly do our best to uh, the majority to attend. Need another few days of the week. Okay, so if we're done with that, moving on to 
resolved that the management meeting minutes be received. Moved by Councillor <coughs> Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. Uh, questions to Mr. Poole on the management meeting minutes. All right, so there's none. Uh, all in favor? It's carried. New, oh, I lost myself, sorry. New business 8.1 community event request resulted that the Friends of the Valley Gold Bonanza held June the 15th be declared declared a community event moved by Councillor Lentoni second by Councillor White discussion Councillor Lentoni I believe just a, just a note it's not gold it's golf Bonanza oh did I say, oh yeah that makes I'm not sense sure, I'm not sure I, I see it. yeah I see that typo now too thank you what golf is that? Golf bonanza. <laughs> um, so I can speak just in regards to that a little bit. Um, they did um, approach me and ask me, asked us to come to council to approve it as a um, community event to assist them with their um, social event at the Veterans Hall. Um, I understand I'm, that there was a question that it's an, uh, uh, an RM fundraiser, but the event is actually held at our Legion Hall. Right. So that's why we would we would need to declare it as a community Cons event. Yes. Thank you. Well, that was gonna be my question. Why were we declaring community event for an hour? Yeah. But if there's a if there's a town component to it then Yeah, there is. Councillor Friesen. That just means that they could buy tickets at the door. That's what that's that means. correct. And right? it assists yes. with the And we can have two of those a year. We do. Right? Yes. Okay. That was what I was going to say. Yeah. Cool. Councillor White. Help me for a moment. I think they made a cleared the last time $100,000. And when you're recruiting in Flint Fond or Thompson, we tell them we have an 18 old golf course. This money goes back to the golf course, which helped us recruiting. So it's part of that jigsaw puzzle. So I, I support it 100%. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delorier. Do, do we only get two or do we get three? I think because I, I, I'd be concerned the ro rodeo needs one, this event would need one, and I'm, something else that might come up. I, I believe it's four. Wendy Wolf uh, yeah. told me that we can have as many community events as we want, but the ones selling tickets at the door and liquor licenses, there is a maximum number, and she just hasn't gotten back to me yet. So the actual number of how many we can have. Yeah. I can get back to you. You should ask her if that is the same one that allows, say, bars to be open past uh, their normal. Do you, you know the answer on that? There's provisions that you can apply to have, and it doesn't matter what event, but any any event that you can okay. apply to the commission to have your hours extended, and that is not involved in the same process of this. Okay. Very good. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, 8.2. Resolved that traffic paint be purchased from Northern Specialties Limited as per attached summary. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Wintoni. Can I just go back to that one? Uh, Mr. Poole, you'll advise the golf course that it has been approved as a community yeah, event. Yeah, so we'll copy that. Yeah, that's fine. Discussion on the traffic paint. We have the decision paper, Council Morio. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Poole, but last year did we have some issues with the traffic paint that was purchased? We did. Um, and we, that's going to be rectified or this year that we're not buying the same product? Uh, we're, we got a different vendor last year. I see. Okay. Any further discussion? Councilor Gray. Do we have specifications that we set out? We do. And are, do these both comply with the specifications? Yeah. So there's no difference? No. Okay. Second thing is, in our soon-to-be bylaw, 
isn't there a, an amount over which council has to consider something like twenty five thousand? That's in the new bylaw currently. Okay, I got it. We haven't passed it yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two thousand. For the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Eight point three. Resolved the town of Swan River purchase the freight liner chassis with Heil, Heel, Heel, PT 1000 compactor from Firm, Firmac for $259,123.28, including taxes. Be it further resolved that the town of Swan River also purchase two camera recording systems for $5,686.16 plus taxes. Moved by Councillor. Memorial, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Okay, discussion. Councillor Memorial. Um, in the 259, um, Mr. Poole, is that in considering the trade in allowance? Yes, okay. this is the expense to the town. Yeah. Okay, and second question on that is what's the requirement um, and the need for two cameras? uh mostly accountability you can say on our employees and uh and we get a lot of a lot of people <coughs> asking did this happen did that happen and so, so with that have we checked into the legalities and their requirements under the um uh, the freedom freedom of information act as to um, the notifications of a recording device in a workplace then we just put a notice on the truck and we don't share it on the website or anything like that. And, uh, so uh, that, that has been checked too. That it, if, if cameras are purchased, we would be in total compliance with that. Yeah. Councillor Delorde and then Councillor White. On your scoring system, how, how did your, the scoring for, for the price was out of 40. How, how did this work? So Darren, Darren put uh, the cheapest price at 40, the, the highest price at zero. Uh, they were sold, the two least prices were the same and the middle price got the score that it got basically. It was, uh, it was basically based on the prices that they, the, that they submitted. You put, put the highest price at 40 the lowest. No, he didn't put the highest price at 40. He said the lowest price. Oh, the, yeah. the lowest price at 40. Sorry, yeah. the lowest. Thank you. Okay. So. And with the specifications, the the heel compactor met every specification we had. The, or sorry, the, the, the 2106 chassis, the, the 607, I believe, didn't have uh, uh, changeable wet valves. The reason they were given less of a score. <clears throat> so a thousand dollars difference made that made the score that different. Like you basically have two hundred sixty thousand for three of them. Right. The it it was like I said. Darren based the the lowest price at forty, the highest price at zero. And the others fell where they fell. So it does put an emphasis on on price. Doing it that way, uh, there wasn't a clearly there wasn't a range. If you're in this range, you get five points. This range, you get six points. So there was, and there was no trade in allowance from from West Back or Fort Erie Industries. Uh, I to be honest, I'd have to get back to you on the numbers on the trade in allowance. I do not know. Okay, because that leads me to my next question, which was, have we talked to Minotaurus Bozeman because they had asked when this came available, if we, if to at least let them know and they could get, they could give us a price right. on what they'd be willing to pay. Maybe they'll pay us more than what the trade and allowance is. Have we talked to them? We haven't talked to them regarding price though. But we, we only did, we would have only done one truck, so it's... What do you mean we would have only did one truck? Or prices for one truck. I don't I don't know if Darren had both trucks in there trading off. I don't know. Well, we're not gonna trade off both trucks. We still need a spare, right? 
Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, yes, we will check with Manitoulin's Bozeman on their price compared to what we get on the auction for the trade on the tender. Councillor White, then Councillor Montoni, and then Councillor Gray. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Moore, could you expand what you're talking about there with, with uh, Mr. Poole? You were concerned about something. Was... Oh, um, there's a provincial act uh, to, uh, that deals with record, recording cameras in a workplace. Yeah. Um, to um, oversee employee actions and things like that, which could potentially be used for disciplinary or actions and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's, there's there's rules and regulations as to when and where and how you could use that recording. Mm -hmm. um, what does it got to do with this truck? The cameras. If you put the cameras on, our employees will be captured on it. And well, this one is camera, this truck. There's a, an option for cameras for six thousand dollars, and the question was, why are we putting cameras on if we haven't checked that? Okay, yeah. correct. Perfect. Thank you, Councilman Tony. Um, my question is, this was just the basic truck. What we have now to handle the current dumpsters, this isn't including the long-term vision of the sidearm side arm that we were. This is the identi not identical, but uh, pretty close to identical to the truck we have now. Same function. What is your opinion on if, if we purchase this truck? And within four years, what do you think? What do you think depreciation will be with with this truck? Why, do they hold their value? Do they not hold their value? Is my question. That is a that's a hard one to answer. Uh, we would have to find communities that have the same design dumpster we do with the rear load. Uh, it's pretty clear that the the industry is going to sidearm. We've talked about that in the committee level that this truck will be harder than usual to sell, but it won't be impossible. But we also have the ability to have a kit to put on the back end to lift the dumps, uh, the, the carts. Right, and that was talked in the committee level too. The plan is to put the attachments on the back of this truck to lift the carts and eventually get the same uh, carts that are going out for recycling and. In a month or two, uh, or a month, we will be the same for waste. <clears throat> and just, just to fin Go ahead. finish my uh, topic on that, um, when you talk about that lift arm, just to be clear that that is not going to save labor of any of any kind, and we will still need persons, employees, to go and move that cart to the back. There won't, other than it actually lifting in the can, there will be no automation to this procedure. Right. That's right. And I can finish too. Yeah. So I guess uh, my uh, my thoughts. I know that this went to a committee level. Um, I just think that I know I understand that we need a, a truck, but I, I I still have reservations, and I think that there might be better ways. But at, at, I'll leave it at that. Councilor Gray, and then Councilor Delorier. Was the specification thing broken out somewhere? Uh, yeah, it was a complete spec on the compactor. Because I don't know how those numbers came up, but and I don't know what specs you were referring to. Here's here, here's the bigger um, problem. I don't. What does demonstrations mean? Uh, we go and basically do a demo on the machine. So even though the the second lowest uh, truck, it was in Alberta, but even if they scored a 20 on the demonstration, they still would be higher. <coughs> they would have scored sort of lower than, uh, than the lowest price truck. Therefore, there's no need to drive to Alberta. Well, let's just look at the price. Because the trade-in allowance is not reflected in all of them. So it shouldn't be reflected in any of them. So the low price that you have is actually four five thousand dollars higher than the other two on the far end. They should be getting zero, and the other two should be getting forties. I, I don't know how you came up with sixteen from a fifteen hundred dollar difference. I mean that just makes no sense. But more importantly, the 
free, the one that you're recommending is actually a zero according to your scaling system, which would make it, um, where would that make it? 160, so that would make it um, the lowest of all of the, the items. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm, 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 this is not what was agreed to be done. This looks very much like a manipulation of the process. It can be, it, it, it does look that way because the lowest score was, was given the highest points. It wasn't the lowest highest. score though. You gave it $5,000 of credit, which doesn't, isn't, shouldn't have been added. So it's the highest score. And you gave it a score, and then if you use your scoring system, that's a zero, not a 40, which is 160. And you would have to have the, I don't know why the other one, but that would leave 173 as your top score. Although it's not as high for services than one beside it, which is within a thousand, well, twelve, fourteen hundred, thirteen hundred dollars, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. I'm sorry. And so, why wouldn't we choose that one? I'm not getting it. It's actually cheaper. The Westwack Freightliner is cheaper than the than the Fairmont Freightliner. Wow. That's well, because because there's a five thousand dollars trade allowance, but we still have the truck, and the truck is going to be worth something. I don't understand. I, that's the most obvious economic thing in the world, isn't it? Was there a trade in allowance for either the Port Geary Industries or the West Vac? Well, there's no trade in allowance. No, they no, they refused to. Okay. The, the trade in allowance is what they would will give us for the, our old truck, correct? So yes, there is a number there. Uh, I can't say if it would be under over five or one or zero or ten. But that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. But well, Sir Delory, I guess we. Can well, that, that was that was my. I was on the same. I wasn't understanding why. why for one thing, the, the 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 scoring on the price doesn't make. Yeah. And no, then to add, add five thousand dollars in there, we're at two seventy on the one and two sixty four on the other. I did talk to Darren on how he scored the price, and it was. It, I got to be honest; it was today. I that, I asked him today on how he scored the price, but it's unfortunate. But uh, I guess we can we can reevaluate our scoring system, but uh, we. That's what it. That's that's how we did it. That's. I don't, I don't understand the, the demonstrations answer. either. I, I don't understand why you would give twenty points for doing a demonstration, but not give everybody a chance to do a demonstration. I don't get it. They were unwilling to give, like, move the truck to Swan River to for us to demonstrate it, and even if we had gone to Alberta, so even for, if they scored a twenty out of twenty on the demo, they still would be under. So there was no need to. They wouldn't be. These are all brand new trucks. Yeah. Which ones were in Alberta? The Fort Erie Industries International. That's in Alberta? That's kind of funny. Well, no, the, the truck that we could demo is in Alberta. It's not coming from Alberta. The new truck won't come from Alberta. What about Westbound? I'm not sure where, where that one is. Because that looks to me like the low price. They're the best price. In the past, we don't demo every single truck that uh, that is bid on we just we just don't we take we take the ones that that are you know have the best price we take the top two sometimes three if it's close but why would we give somebody 20 points then i'm not getting that what what a value is that i see what you're saying if we don't demo them all what's the point of score here i guess we can go back and, and reevaluate uh the, the specification points Okay, so what's the little council? Uh, let's uh, table it till another meeting. The mover and the seconder was Councillor. Okay, I'll move the table. Councillor Morial. Uh, so I moved at the resolutions. Okay. I'll move the table. All right. So we'll add that to our next agenda. <clears throat> Okay, so 8.4, result of the Town of Swan River 2019 schedule of fees, rates, and prices be approved. Moved by Councillor 
Friesen, second by Councillor. Nobody wants to move to any item tonight. Lentoni, discussion. Councillor Friesen, or sorry, Councillor Gray. Why are we increasing the fee? Uh, this was done back, well, the direction was done back in December to managers to, to increase. You did that? No, no, that was for me. Oh of our financial position uh and that was it i told everyone to raise their their fees by three to five percent obviously if they've had a recent increase if they've if they've uh you know rounded to a dollar it makes sense there's some cemetery fees that did not get touched there's some there's a whole bunch of fees that didn't go up we went to the ones that we could move up that made sense uh that haven't been moved in in a while, and these are the results. We can keep them the same. This is a, just a way to increase our revenues. Uh, nothing went up a crazy amount. Everything that went up is in red, except for the recreation, which is, uh, which is listed in the table on the 5% increase. The other and the fire department, we are waiting for the new uh, fire department bylaw. Right. So those ones aren't listed, and that's the reason why this hasn't come earlier. Was we were just waiting for that bylaw to to go, but we're already in May, so you guys can at least see it. But in my opinion, this needs to be done. Any further discussion, Councilor Lentoni? I, I just looking through the, the some of the prices and just going to the cemetery. Um, when we have when we have an open and close, it should be just a flat fee, correct? It, what if what, if we, what happens when? So a flat fee, no matter what, for the cemetery, whether it's on a weekday or a weekend, correct? No, if it's on a weekend in the winter. Or sorry, if it's on a weekend, it's two hundred dollars more. If they don't give us uh, seventy-two hours notice in the winter, it's an, another two hundred dollars. Oh, that's the extra cost. Councilor Gray. Okay, thank you. Okay. So the recreation fees are going up because we can't even come close to covering our costs. And so anything we put up, didn't, and again, maybe I'm missing sure. Didn't we agree that we're going to essentially charge people on what it costs us? Or did, for instance, does it cost us more than $500 to do a rezoning? Uh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. We, that's a loss. What do we do? Uh, just the administration of hours. If you want to count wages, I know in the past well, the council, council does, you know, we've been, they don't really care about wages, but uh, yes, the amount of time that we have to spend with the person, with the application process, the CAO, like it may not seem like a lot, but it adds up. Okay. Well, if you tell me, I mean, if you tell me there's been an analysis and in fact we're losing money on it, then that's a different thing. Because zoning memorandums for thirty dollars can't possibly cost us thirty dollars to prepare. No, they cost us like three dollars to prepare. It's usually not the preparation of the, uh, the documents; those take minutes. It's the time spent with the applicants and the owners for a zoning memorandum. Yeah, but nobody wants to pay those fees. We have to convince them of why they're paying those fees. Well, that's but that's not a. The zone, and, zoning memoranda will only come from lawyers, and the court, it'll be a letter that says, please provide me a zoning memoranda. And you look at the map, you say it's an R1, and you type it into the form. Yeah, like, like that's, I, that's one that comes, a lot of zoning that one comes to me particularly, but, and, and a rezoning fee, I mean, if, it, if there's a, I, I'm just, okay, so let me go to another one. Water and sewer connections. Again, I, I'm, the rate it was up to forty five dollars a foot. Is that less than what we're than what we are? It would cost us. Yes. Okay. Then and, and why wouldn't we cost charge? The question in recreation is because we couldn't possibly charge people and have them use it. Is the same reason why we don't do water connections at the cost? Is there a reason we're subsidizing? That's what I'm asking. 
because that's the wish of council. We've 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 had these rates for so long. We've tried to increase them in the past and See? failed. Uh, it's 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 supposed to be used in that argument. It's used as a incentive to develop. It. Like whenever we try and increase rates. We have had the answer. People will not develop if you increase these rates. Do I believe that? No, but it's not going to stop them. I, I believe we can recover those costs. If people are going to develop, they're going to have water and sewer, and they're going to pay the cost to do it. Then the argument starts coming: Are we the cheapest out there? And and we do have a bylaw that that maybe needs to be looked at. We've looked at it in the past for opening it up to. To contractors to perform the work, but uh, but it's just I guess the the answer is is that this is the way it is and and we keep rolling with it. If if you guys instruct me to recover my costs on the utility installations, I have zero problem with that, none See, whatsoever. That's I, and again maybe I'm I know we did this in recreation, but maybe I'm maybe we didn't talk about it in council, and that's maybe that's my fault. I just can't remember. But I thought we had taught, and maybe it was at an a informal session or something. Taxes are, are taxes. That's how we raise our revenues. But but for every service, our process should be that people pay the cost of delivering the service. Because why should Councillor White or other old people pay because Councillor Quintoni wants to develop a new subdivision? It, it makes no sense that the person who's developing the subdivision should pay for it. Or the people who are buying those houses, or somebody, not what? Why should our taxpayers pay for subsidize somebody else's work? That doesn't make sense to me, unless there's some reason. Unless we can show demonstrably that we're going to. Um, in recreation, we can't do it. We we would we would have to charge. I don't know what it is. What we figure what Patty said, but it's like twenty nine dollars a trip to the pool. And apparently, nobody's going to pay twenty nine dollars, so we can't do that. But but for um, for these other things, surely we need to figure out what the cost is and just work towards that. That's what we find. Because when I looked at it, I just assumed that we, we'd already figured that out and that these were just increases. I'm going, well, why would we increase something automatically? It doesn't make sense. No, and there are there are things, as you can see, built in is those costs are for new houses. There's a, they pay even less if they're building a new house. So it's, it's all based on incentives and getting people to build here. So if that, if that vision needs to change, council needs to tell the administration to change that vision, and we can gladly put the costs to where what they actually are. And you guys know the repercussion. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I say, I'm willing to fight the fight. We will. We'll say you're paying the cost of what it is, and the developers will not like it. Maybe will anyone building a house, but that's what it is. But you guys have to give us that direction, and we will do it. Right. Okay, Councilor Morio. So, can we potentially table this and the administration come up with a document with the actual prices on it so that. And maybe we have to build it over time. Like, we don't want to triple them right. this year. But, like, so that we can compare with, like, with, like, say, water and sewer. Give us one that has the actual numbers of what it actually costs, like the cost recovery, so that we compare it to where we're at now and see if it's something feasible or it's sticker shock. That we might have to do something like council races over time. Councilor Deloria. I would counter Councilor Moore's proposal with passing this. For the most part, Derek knows, water and sewer, Derek knows that these prices are lower than what it costs. And we have them get on the utility committee for a number of years now. We know that, that we don't have our costs. Are most of these are a 5% increase. I think, in light of our financial situation, pass this and then. For the next time this comes up, have an analysis of, of okay, if we were to recoup our costs, what do these numbers look like? And maybe there will be some sticker shock. We'll have to use some of the same philosophy we use at the pool is nobody's going to pay to dump their garbage if we're charging uh, $400 a ton at the dump. We, we might have to have some sort of subsidy. So I think for tonight, we should pass this. The administration went with the, uh, uh, with the, with the focus of raising Rates where they made sense, five percent. That'd be my my thoughts on it. I to that. But for the next time, do an analysis and, and see. Okay, what does it cost for curbing gutter, gutter replacement per lineal foot? Okay, I do that. Okay. All right. So then, uh, 
further discussion? So on the question, all in favor? It's carried. <laughs> so maybe in, maybe in the next you know few months, maybe we can see what those are. Yeah. Yeah, we can prepare that. Okay, 8.5. Resolved that the Valley and the Mountains Tourism and Parkland Tourism 2019 memberships in the amount of $2,550 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? Um, uh, oh. Sorry, Councillor Morio. Um, just need to point out that this invoice amount is for our membership in the Parkland Tourism along with uh, it's the combined invoice that we did last year versus separate invoices from the park renters and the group and helping in council and Tony. Um, the Valley in the Mountains membership uh, and then the ad that was in the new uh, paper or new book. In the new guy, yeah. So this is a, it's a combined total of three previously traditionally three invoices that now into one. Okay. Uh, Councillor Wintoni, you have a question? No, I was just helping. Okay. Councillor Gray? Yeah. <laughs> so Rise takes the, it took the view that we wouldn't, didn't want to participate with park and tourism because when we put money in, they don't, we don't actually get any money out. It goes to Dauphin and stays there. And we were moving our process to going north. So I'm not sure why the town then, who actually contributes to the money that Rise puts in, is contributing to park on tourism. There's there's no analysis of it. Valley and, and I thought we were going to again one of the things that, and maybe I missed it because I don't know anything about Valley in the Mountains. It's just a it's just a, a request, isn't it? Is there something more to this about what it's what it's doing? Can yes, I, can speak, I can speak on uh, behalf of the Valley in the Mountains, and that is the. The money, the funds there is just for the ads in the tourism guide. That that's all it is. As far as parkland tourism, I'm not even sure what that is. To be quite honest, I know that the town of Swan River has put a wrap forward all the time. So I think that's with the membership. I don't know anything about parkland tourism. Um, like Councillor Gray says that we were moving away from parkland tourism. Um, in the Valley of the Mountains meeting, which this is from, I don't recall approve or even hearing about the Parkland Tourism membership fees and tourism guide. Um, for myself, I would need more information on that piece. I know that the Valley of the Mountains is for just for the, the ad that every municipality puts in, in for. So I guess for my my personal or my view on that and knowing the facts that I know, I would approve the Valley in the Mountains um, membership support for the ad. The other one, I would need more information about it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like this is April the 9th. Did they not? Have you you met you have attended some of their meetings? I've attended all. I missed one meeting. I t attended the first one. I didn't hear anything about the parkland tourism, no. uh, and the second one I was not in yeah, attendance. We, we just talked about the valley and the mountains to the, the guide and that, but not the tourism. So, as far as parkland tourism reps, I know that the town has traditionally had. Beth bought and sit on the parkland tourism board, um, who attends those. I know that she's resigning and we were putting forward the motion that Stacy would um, attend that, but that was only in regards to um, a little bit of travel allowance from the town for that. Um, I was not aware of any tourism guide on their behalf or membership for Parkland tour Tourism. Okay, so then in light of that, then we don't really know, then should we be... I, I, this one too because I can find out more information. Um, I think that we probably should support, or the town has agreed, or we put, put an ad in the, in the tourism guide already. I, I feel that we should. We've already we've already expended the money. <laughs> we've already well, expended the why? money. Okay, well, uh, then I. But I I, I, I withdraw my whole issue. I 
If we've already put the ads in, we have to pay the bill. Uh, Parkland is already has our ad. I don't know anything. Okay. So I, 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 I guess my recommendation would be to, we've already put the ad in Valley of the Mountains. I don't know anything about the to, Parkland tourism, if there's an ad or anything of I'm that. sorry, if I'd known we'd already expended the money, then, well, then I wouldn't even ask the question. But that's the, anyway, whatever. It's so so if, if the money has already been spent, which it appears that that's what has, been, has happened, then I think moving forward, we need to know a little bit more about what's going on before, in 2020. We, before we put ads and things, we need to know what exactly what we're doing or why we're doing it. We have a strategic plan for it. Councillor Friesen. We had uh, Parkland Tourism books with us in Flint Pond. And were they helpful? Stacy did not like them at all. She said, look at this. We got this little ad and this little whatever. That, very, very little said about Swan River. That's why we didn't, on behalf of Rise and Tourism, that we didn't support any of the parkland tourism information and then to, to be presented with that. I'm not even sure what that is, so I don't know. I, I can't even speak on behalf of it. Okay. So I think... Can we, well, can we find those two things out? <coughs> if we've already got <coughs> of the ads or either of the ads, then we clearly have to pay, for, pay what we've already booked. I just... Yeah, this, this is this is not the fact of, of supporting something coming up. This is something that's already been done. Um, the Valley I, of the Mountains. I yes. The question would be why, but so if we can find out more about that, but I think it's I, right. We, if we have a bill that we I would be looking, committed somehow to, then we are entitled to all. I, I would be looking to amend this resolution to to approve the payment for Valley of the Mountains and require more information for Park Life Tourism. Oh, sir. The, the Valley in the Mountains, the, each person that had an ad in the old book was contacted if they wanted to continue with their ad Absolutely. in the new book. So they would have had authorization from this office to proceed with that. So, so let's amend the resolution to not pay parkland tourism right now until we find out more about it and amend the amount. That's what whoever was passed. That was the motion that was moved and seconded by Councillor White. Yeah. Tourists. Tourists. So tourists. Yeah. Tourists. So you don't want to defeat the resolution. You want to change it to, to not approve. pay for it and then approve it? To approve the payment for Valley of the Mountains, but require more information on the Parkland Tourism membership, including the annual tourism guide. So a condition, like on the condition that we get more information? I don't no. think, no. no. I, I think that we, what's being asked right now is just have it amended so that we uh, approve the Valley of the Mountains tourism. Period. Is it not already written like that? that no, it, it has Parkland tourism added in the resolution. After the okay. first tourism. So if you remove that and then we will find out more about that. And if we are obligated to pay for it, then we can always do that in the next uh, meeting. And I presume this comes out of a budget line that we have for advertising? It would be, yeah. So, refresh, resolve the Valley in the Mountains Tourism 2019 memberships in the amount of, be approved. Uh, change the amount. 1,250, sorry. Very fresh. Okay, so resolve that the Valley in the Mountains Tourism 2019 membership in the amount of $1,250 be approved for payment. So I had moved by Councillor Wintoni and second by Councillor White. White. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Going forward, shouldn't we? Have a plan for what we're going to advertise for and where we're going to advertise and then just leave administration to implement the plan is not a better way than us worrying about a twelve hundred dollar bill and, and i guess i was i was gonna I, I talk about the exact same thing that i was under the impression that we wouldn't see that that would be something approved by administration without it having to come to that we've already pre-planned for it and, and we have it in a budget line. I guess it's something that we are looking at because we're questioning this, but I didn't think that that would have to come to 
to council, I thought that administration would have looked after that decision. Well, in, in, in the past, it, it hadn't because it was part of a committee, I believe is probably why, and, and somebody had brought that forward at some point in time. Uh, I, I, I don't remember, but... But no doubt we, we can always look at uh, changing that. Resolved that the town of Swanner donate the use of 15 picnic tables at a cost of $75 to the high school rodeo on May the 11, 2019. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Wintour. Am I missing something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't we didn't we agree we were going to do donation? I mean, well, I, I thought so too. I just I'm reading what I'm seeing in front of me. No, no, I know. But admi administration will follow policy, and ours is to deny this. And we like it's it is frustrating because we we get some gets deferred to committees, then committees defer to other committees. And then they have passed, and then we make up things like September one. We're gonna we're gonna really not give them stuff, but we told them that we're not gonna give them stuff in nineteen, and eighteen, and seventeen. The administration is gonna follow the policy, and until the policy changes, they're gonna come to council. I just there's no other way that I can deal with it because no manager knows what what council wants to do with it. But how can I? How can I? Like we can do it. Like we'll just like my my thing is give them all away. Like pick something, nothing. Give it all away, where we own them and we have some sort of cheap, expensive. I don't know. What's the answer? We've never been able to answer this. And I guess I know everyone's getting frustrated with the tables and why are you guys spending time on this seventy-five dollars? This should not be on our agenda. It really shouldn't. This is one of the things that Roger advised us to stay away from. Right. But uh, we need to follow our policy. And if the policy is we don't donate them, then we don't donate them. If it's if we if council wants to decide that we give them all away, let's give them all away. Council Morio. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is it current process um, that we have right now? Even though appears to be flawed is that they're required to pay this and then they request from council for a grant in the equal amount of that to cover that's, it all. That's what the next letter is from from Harold uh, from Harry Hunt. Here. Uh, you? Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm going to speak with if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I have a solution. Okay. I'm going to vote against it. When we defeat it, I will give you a check for seventy five dollars so I don't ever have to just talk about it again, okay? Can you just get rid of this? I'm so tired of fighting more crap. That's actually, I, I just had the same thought. I thought, you know, it's $75. I'm sure that the High School Rodeo Association has, or the group has gone to lobby all the businesses. And I was to the same thinking, like, I'll just give them the $75, you know, to, to pay for it rather than asking taxpayers to put it exactly. or go through this process because it's coming. Because then we pick this one, but the next one we say we don't. Or yeah. the same with, with your, your group. Who I know, it's sitting right here. I'll talk a little bit. Exactly. What's well, the same thing? That's coming up. And I, my view is no, we, we don't give, don't need anything. We, we have some for rent or we don't own it at all and we give it to somebody else and they can rent it. But the idea that we're going to forever have to deal with requests from $100 or $500 or $1,000 or $50 for the cost of stuff. And, and, and I don't know whether that's a reasonable fee or not. The fee should be only what it costs us, or, and, and that's it. But it, but that's a different issue that we, we're going to deal with that separately. For this one, I'm voting against it, and I will give them the damn $75. I just want it off the agenda. Okay, so further discussion? I won't give you your thoughts. I know that. Is it related you know, it's, to it's, this? Diff it's dangerous when you make cut and dry resolutions. Because sometimes there are places where the shades are gray. As a lawyer, you would know that better than anybody. So we take, for example, Swan Valley Sport Fish, which, by the goodness of their heart, decided we would move to the arena just in case hockey, and we had it booked. So we moved by goodwill to move to the arena. Now, as a consequence of that... To the rink. You moved to the current arena. Thank you. As a consequence of our good faith, trying to help hockey, which we believed in, we got a, we're getting a $900 bill 
for tables. Now, if we booked the arena and stayed there, the tables were always there. It would have cost us nothing other than the rental of the, of the arena. We now have to pay another $1,000 bill to the curling club. We move those tables. Then I find out that they need the tables over there for safeguard. They're going to have to move them all over regardless, which we did for them. Which, and that help from your team, absolutely. Council Light Light, I know that your intentions are good, but we're speaking about the high school rodeo right now. Let's just say principal. Resolution. So I think that if we have no other further discussion on that, we should vote on this. Well, I thought there was discussion because that's the principle we're talking about. Wow. Whether we If we want to talk about how we do uh, donations that you're referring to, then we should debate that in another meeting, okay? I disagree with you, but okay. I'm only oh, one. Okay, thank you. So all in favor? No, guys. Opposed? It's defeated. Okay, just I'll give you a chance. Mm -hmm. Just come and have somebody come to the office or send them to the office or send me a bill or whatever. Take okay. it off my pay, whatever you do. I don't <laughs> care. Can I bring point. can I bring sorry, can I bring the donation policy forward, a draft one? Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, what the policy is there are no donations and, and here's the solution on, on that one. For all these years we should back pay charge you for the thousand dollars that we forgot to charge you for tables previously. I don't know what was wrong with our administration. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that to our attention. We're going to so send we can you only go back seven years, so you'll only owe us seven thousand dollars. We're going to send you a bill for moving it over. Eight point seven. Whereas Minnesota Construction Limited is currently in construction phase on seven hundred three Main Street development, and whereas the street access is needed in order for large equipment to access certain areas of the site, and whereas the excavation needed for the proper and safe installation of the fuel tanks requires a safety parameter to include a portion of 6th Avenue South through the excavation doesn't include any demolition of the road structure. Therefore, be it resolved that uh, requ the request from Minister Construction to close 6th Avenue South in various hours from May 7th to May 14th and, and for one full day during the tank installation projected to take place in the period of May 7th to May 14th be approved. Moved by Councillor Lantoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. All right. Uh, sure. Obviously, if there's any damage, they're going to cover the cost, right? That's implied. I, I assumed it was implied, and then they go, so they got a sickening feeling. Result of the request from Hayes. Child Care Center in the amount of $75 and the Association for Community Living for four residential home in the amount of $300, both to cover Town of Swanner fire inspection fees be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, Town, and seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Should maybe read. Be this. Well, we, sorry, I wasn't too late. I, I, no, no, we can go back. I, I, I can go back if you want to ask a question. I'm sorry, I'm moving along here. But um, just in regards to the recommendation, if you wanted to read that recommendation as well, it might be right because that's no recommendation. Oh, wait a minute. That's not. It says that we decline. In regards to yeah. the requests. Well. Yeah, I thought we'd already gone over this whole policy that we were going to. If people are going to make a request for for a grant, it was going to be based on this is what we need and this is why we need it, not we want you to give us something for free, right? Right. I believe the protective services committee has a uh, pending change to the fees once the new uh, fire protection bylaw is done. I think we had discussed this previously about the inspection process being. Uh, free for the initial inspection, follow up free. If, an, if a third inspection is required, it would be a high amount. That's correct. That's what we were working towards. Right. So I, I'm just trying to read all the information okay. here and I, and I may okay. have missed it. I, and I apologize. Damn, sorry. And I do apologize. Well, is, that, is that a bonus he's, just he's just recommended what we just did. We defeated it though. Right. Well, that's what he's asking us to ask for it to be. But, 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 oh. but if we're if we've got a policy that's about to come in, that's about to say we're going to be the first one free. Uh, first, I don't understand that policy, but let's assume that that's the policy. Um, 
then whatever. Okay, so I, I just I, keep sending me bills. I, <laughs> I, I missed the nine point one. I apologize for that. So resolved at the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District Municipal Levy for the two thousand. 18 and 19 fiscal year in the amount of ten thousand eighty one dollars and thirty seven cents be approved for payment moved by councillor Friesen second by councillor white discussion councillor morio oh never mind i just okay well this is the commitment but obviously we know that there's some flaws to that commitment oh, but right uh, <clears throat> isn't the combined invoice for thirteen thousand four forty one yeah, but if we're booted out on January first, yeah, the, the the resolution. Oh, it says ten thousand. Is saying for the eighteen nineteen fiscal year. Oh, but eighteen nineteen oh, fiscal no, year. Sorry. Okay. okay, but those numbers are wrong. Section twenty five says that there's a process. They haven't followed the process. Firstly, firstly, they never sent us the invoice in a timely way under the new act or under the old act. Secondly. <laughs> There's a process under the existing act under section 25. It's there to figure out the calculation based on assessments, assessment based on the area that we're in, 50% based on our comparative assessment there, and then 50% on the entire district. That's the process. Whatever we've agreed to in the past mistakenly is not even lawfully available. This council can't agree to it. And so I don't know why we would, and given that we've now taken a principled approach for next year, why would we? this year say yeah it's okay and we're not going to be I mean, they can't kick us out we haven't asked it to leave we've said we're not going to pay until there's a resolution the minister hasn't set those fees why would we pay them so our assessment for this year isn't accurate firstly under section 25 we should send them what we're what we actually believe ourselves to owe under section 25 of the existing act and now there are some issues that i wasn't aware of when i so forcefully argued this after we had a actual planning discussion about it that that facts that might have been helpful to know so for instance we apparently for some time taxed them when we weren't supposed to um, and and so there's a big, big amount of money that we should have paid back so that offsets some of this but why would we i, I don't understand why would we vote to pay a bill that we vociferously spoken against and said that for next year we're not going to pay. Why wouldn't we only pay the amount that we're required to pay in law and send them a letter that says, we are prepared to discuss this, but we're not paying more than we're supposed to pay until there's a resolution that works in everyone's favor. It, what, so what is supposed to be that actual uh, for the that? The current formula is you take the land assessment in the sub-district you're in. Right. Right, fifty percent of your assessment is based on the land assessments of your district and what the and and the expenditures in that district, and then fifty percent is for the entire is the land assessment for the entire district. Have you got section twenty five up? So you can see what I'm talking about. It's a very convoluted section. That's what they're required to do. So then we need uh, administration to find out what that number is. Well, what I'm suggesting is we, we, we know that the number for the next year is $6,000. We've already overpaid them this year. So we should send them an amount, $6,000, some amount, amount um, which, which is our uh, view of what the assessment will be for the year. Okay, we know what they, they given us a bill based on their 2012 assessment process, right? But we actually know what the number would be if they followed the law. So why wouldn't we approve and send them the amount that we are, are required to pay pursuant to the law? And only if the minister overrides the law and we decide not to challenge it, will we pay the balance? Councillor DeLore. So, so in section 25, uh, how, what determines what is a sub-district program and a district program? Well, okay, so it's a question of fact, but this is what I mean. If it's money that's spent in the sub-district, then it's a sub-district program. If it's money that's spent across the, the entire district, then it's a district program. But it's 50-50 anyway. 50% is based on the amount that's spent in your sub-district. As I recall. I haven't looked at it for a couple of weeks now. 
So then uh, I would probably then recommend that other council vote on this resolution and either pass it or, or uh, reject it. And then if it is rejected, then we can uh, get it. Well, I'll propose an to... alternative one if you want. Right. Or that. So, council Morio. With that, if we're going to vote on this one, um, we need to make an amendment to change the 2018 to 19 fiscal year to. 1920. Well, first he's 1920. That's right. So, so we need to make that amendment, and then we can well, I, vote on this one, and then make a. I suppose we can actually. I can move an amendment to change the amount from 13,441.82 to the amount that was was in the. You remember we have the numbers from Lake uh, Lake uh, Swan Lake Watershed District. So we whatever can, whatever that the, number is. This. This resolution, though, is for the 1819 fiscal year. This is the old, under the old. That is true. I, well, part of it's under the old. My point is that we know that, that the assessment is, that this year's assessment is wrong as well. Right. It's closer to that other number. Okay. It's not that other Because they had that 10, which we see here right now, plus they were adding that extra for that reserve fund of 3,000, whatever it was. No, no, that's not. What they've done is taken this year's assessment, which was the same as last year's, and then a quarter for next year. Uh, Councillor Deloye. The, the resolution reads 1819, but the invoice is 1920. No, the, the resolution needs to be amended for 1920. Yeah. It's yeah. a 1928 the, specimen. Yeah, so, the, the resolution is wrong. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see here. You're right. Okay, there. Here's the fish. So we. So my my. I'm I'm moving to amend, and I'm going to pull a number out of my ass because I don't know the number off the head. That we pay them the amount that is estimate was estimated in our discussions with Lake with the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District um, for the two, for 2020. That we pay them that amount, the amount that was based on the assessment. For the entire district because we don't haven't gotten any other number and if there's a, a, a up to a maximum of seven thousand dollars and that if we pay if there's a further bill that we brought back to council i like that because it, we're staying it we're still staying with them where yeah. we haven't bailed on them and that helps them too because they do good stuff That's right. I, I, yeah. I thought i had brought that with me but i, I didn't but I, you're, I you're right I, it's very I, close I to that it's around it's sixty six hundred and some dollars or sixty one hundred i don't remember Put it up if they debate it. We'll, well, look, if they say, look, I, I don't even mind if we say we're going to give them a voluntary contribution. I object to it being paid as part of the invoice. That's my objection. My objection isn't paying them thirteen thousand dollars because I don't really care. In a, in a seven million dollar budget, six thousand dollars is nothing. But what is important is that, the, that they understand we're not paying them because they build it. We're paying them this amount because that's what's supposed to be paid. If it's a voluntary contribution, we'll talk about that. So the mover and the seconder agreed to the amendment. Who are the movers and seconder? Friesen and, and Friesen White. And White. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Nice. So we'll just change that number. Is that the plan? Just let me know when you have yeah. that fixed. Then. Yeah, refresh here. And, and then you follow up with them about. Look, we're prepared to talk about the rest, but we're not going to be bullied into it. We don't think it's right. Done. Change. Change. No, it didn't change. Nineteen twenty. Well, no, the amount. Resolution. The amount has not changed. What did you want the amount to be? We don't have the exact. Oh, we do. We need a set amount. Can the amended one be general? It's that we'll pay um, as per section twenty five, yeah. whatever it is, to well, a maximum of seventy five. Uh, that we that this. Um, you, you have that, that breakout from, you don't have it here, but you have the breakout from Lake Watershed. Yeah. As set out in Schedule A. And then you'll attach Schedule A, which is that. Is that it? Yes. There you are. I look after you guys. <laughs> well, I think we're very good. <laughs> well, I thought we'd use this. Reference to the section that has the. Uh, Part of scheduling. Well, it says higher than I remember it. Um, it says that our share is 81, 80, 48. I don't remember being that high, but 
Well, yeah, because they had th three scenarios there, right? Well, this one is the <laughs> 2019 consistent bill rate. Eight one eight one eight zero point four eight. If that was the right number. Oh no! Here he is. Here, here's. Uh, I apologize. Seven one seven zero point five four. There's all this one lake worse. Shed Conservation District Municipal Levy for the 2019 and 20 fiscal year in the amount of 7,170 be approved for. So refresh. Yep. Result of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District Municipal Levy for the 2019-20 fiscal year in the amount of $7,170.54 be approved for payment. Mover was uh, Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Perfect. And just to be clear, there will be follow-up with that to the watershed, correct? Are you taking that away so that we can't? You're throwing it away so we don't use it again? Oh, no, I kept that one. Oh, what did you throw away? I'm not telling. I'll be go find it in the garbage later anyway. Be it resolved that the accounts are no hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 24261 to 24332 for a total of $273,187.07. <laughs> Payroll account checks number 4442 to 4448. For a total of one hundred thousand one hundred six and twenty four cents, moved by Councillor Antonio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion questions, Councillor Morio. Um, a general question on check number two four two six one uh, for an overtime meal. Um, for that amount, Mr. Poole, refresh my memory. Uh, a supper meal. Is there a max amount on that that we have? No, you guys negotiated just a meal after three hours of overtime. So that is exactly what's been brought up with the manager of recreation to make sure I have a copy. In case. So, so that will be flagged for as a negotiating item as to we have to do limits on meals. We have to do per diem. It has to be they pay, we pay back to a maximum of this amount for breakfast, dinner, supper. Okay. So that's going to get that's a little tricky with public works because. It's really convenient, especially when you're working at night in the winter time, that one person go get lunch. There's ways around those. Yeah, okay, good. That, that'll be discussed at that yes. time. Yeah. So you're keeping notes on that then? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Councilor Delore. I think we made a mistake on that last resolution. We, we, 70, 71, uh, 70 is based on them only wanting to uh, raise $75,000 where they, they want to raise $85,000. Because they want to raise extra put into that fund. Right. Yeah, but, but we, the whole point of our position was that we are only agreeing to the minimums for now, the rest of it. But where, but where in the act does it say that, because in 25-1, it says that they, they're, that the board is allowed to determine, uh, the amount of money they required to carry on a scheme, right? So if they if they've determined they need eighty five thousand dollars, but they don't spend any of the over money. They got to. I, I'm not. So don't they can't. don't worry. I I hate that as much as you, but but it, but the act does give them the, that power to to. No, I think. How does it not? Twenty five one says it because they're not that using the, it for a purpose. They haven't said to something that says we're going we need this much money for this purpose. Board subject to the limits set out in the schedule. Right. My computer just died. Pardon my French. Um, but uh, that's fine. We can go. We can do the other number. I don't care. But that's not. I. I don't think it allows them to. Uh, it only allows them to say we're going to do spend this much money. It doesn't allow them to say we want to keep overtaxing you in case we might want to spend it later. I agree, and I don't like outside committees keeping these little bundles of money. But 
the way I read 25.1, they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to set, it, set, it says, to carry, let carry on a ski. Let, 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 let them say that. I, I guess I'm willing to pick a fight with them over stuff, but, but I don't want to pick a fight with them over something that they're legitimately able to do. But I don't think so. Go ahead. If I may, the resolution's been passed, and if you want, if a councillor wants to bring it back, they, they do it in a notice of motion to let the rest of the council know that we'll be back on the table. Well, no, no there's we a can, further motion. The other motion, there, we can do it another way. We could be introducing a new motion to add the extra difference. That's true. But if we wanted time to research this and, and discuss. Which can be done at the next meeting as well. We find out a little bit more about it. I know what you're saying. <clears throat> you, you're just afraid you're going to go there and they're going to give you that. They're going to yell at you. Well, I, I, no, I just don't want to go there and say, we're doing these things wrong and we're only going to give you this much because we've been doing these things wrong. And and really, they, and they come back at us and say, well, we, we're not doing this entirely wrong. Right. And now we've made a bigger issue than what what is there. So, Fair enough. Do you want to add the other? So, well. I, I I will I can wait till next meeting because I will, my computer died and I will be able to read the act. No, we can wait till the next meeting. Me we carry on. Give me that thing. Okay, so uh, it is. I knew you'd be close it. Checks. So moving on. Uh, no checks. We uh, did I I've read that resolution already. Yeah, we have now. Yeah. Oh, we have right, okay. questions on it. Okay. Wow. So are we done the questions on the accounts? Uh, well, All in favor? <laughs> yeah, don't let me talk. It's I'll carried. Talk forever. Okay. Can I move on or do you want me to stop? Yeah, go ahead. I don't care. Okay. I mean, it's all the same questions that I have every time. So. Resolve that bylaw number 2, 2019 mm -hmm. Special Service Solid Waste Collection Bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councillor when uh, Memorial. <laughs> Seconded by Councillor Lentoni. Discussion. Oh, just hang on. This one I did a speed. Where are we? Here? Eleven point one. No, no, I'm, that's not what I'm looking for. There. Eleven point one. Oh no, I'm good with this one. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Okay. Can I? Can I add? Something or come back to visit something. I'm going to move that we pay the Swan Valley Watershed Conservation District one thousand and nine dollars and ninety four cents as a special contribution to their um, to their expenses for the 2019-18 year, over and above what they really should have billed us. So you okay? can you can pop that into. Uh, it'll have to be it can just be right next step. After yeah, nine point two. One or two? Or that way you'll be in safe okay. paragraph safe ground when you go there. Is you that see fine? 18, 19, you put it nine point mm -hmm. two one 18, two. 19 or 19 you have to have a one and a two? Does that I'll, I'll add it in after the bylaws are passed. Okay. So or you, you can work on that while I get this done then. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a special payment for them. 11.2 resolve that bylaw number 4, 2019, tax certificate fee bylaw be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Okay. This is one where I know it doesn't cost you $30 to do a tax certificate. <laughs> It irritates me for my own words. It even costs us twenty-five dollars for because it doesn't matter to me. It costs a client, right? And I don't even do that many land deals, but the other two law firms do lots of them. And quite candidly, the only people who get tax certificates are people who are getting mortgages, um, and and it doesn't cost us thirty bucks. That no, it? no, I'll admit that. But I guess we are the town of Swan River. We are in a financial crisis. I'm raising That's revenues you. everywhere I can. And this is one of them. The council decided to do this movie yes. by bylaw. I'm going to vote against it, but that's all right. Go ahead. Uh, other municipalities, this is a similar rate. Further discussion? <laughs> council Morial. Uh, so, further to your just comment, have you done a comparison with other municipalities as to what uh, tax certificate fees are charged? Only in the valley, and we would be similar to them. 
They're actually similar now. <coughs> no, they're thirty dollars. Have they just raised it? They must have just raised it because it was twenty five. Anyway. Okay, they did because they're thirty. <laughs> they told us. Well, uh, Tony, did you have a question? I did not. No. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so we're just waiting on that last resolution. Is that in there? Because I don't think we have any notice of motion. Well, you need, uh, this is a separate amount. Not, not, it's not a review of the previous one. We're giving them a special um, gift yes. of a thousand and nine dollars and ninety four cents. So if anybody has to work. take a break, go ahead and take a break and go and have a. Okay, so we'll uh, come back out of recess here. So resolve that. Uh, $1,009.94 be paid to the Swan Lake Marshhead District as a special contribution. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Resolve, resolve that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss the uh, CAO uh, candidate position. And is there anything else, uh, Councillor? I've got two items that I'd like to talk about, personnel um, for two two different positions. Was, did I see okay. somebody to be a casual? Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. It was Mario. That's <laughs> okay. All in favor? <laughs> it's carried. I'd like to make a motion that uh, uh, offer be extended to Charles Kroll, who's hired as CAO. I'll second it. I, I don't have read the resolution yet. Oh, well, way to go. Wednesday, 8 p.m., RCMP, Swan Valley School Division and Vet Board, eh? Oops. We're going to pop that into, it'll be out of, <clears throat> it'll be between 14 and 15. Charles Kroll be offered uh, the position of CAO. It's in the wrong spot, but I'll move it in minutes. You have it in 14? Yeah. Okay. Resolve that Charles Crow be offered the position of CEO, moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor? <laughs> White, Gloria, Jacobson, Mario. Against? Stay. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Quintoni, second by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's carried.